50 year old with them gorillas stood tall. Ain't let nobody touch me, quit being silly. I know for a fact your chick can make a mess for my dogs. Cause we doing better, plus we doing better than y'all. I'm at home when I'm down there in Lexington, dog. Got the kid, nigga, gonna drop you in, who next to you, dog? Go get a sad little T. Get ahead of them boys. When you take off, I'll look back and try to rescue them boys. I got his man's to make sure you get the rest of them boys. I got to get the best of you, just get the rest of new boys. Let's get it. So let me know what you can handle, ready? Okay, come grab it. Look, here goes some extra. So if I'm busy, you can manage things. Happy bleed dance, need $60 salary. I'll tell you, get it there and back. Tell the feds I need a challenge. My first offer was 30 years. Now, so the prosecutor holler at me when she saw, bro. Yeah. For roll, I'm a fella. You think I ain't got that blow in you? You right, bro. Take his whole head off his soul. Bro. So you hear me? Hit the rollie, stop with the rollie on. Let's go. Who was our getaway car? Jay Corcoli. Yeah, yeah. You hear me? Hey, I heard I had some sneak dishes. Whoever feel hot, that egg, I got a heat sense. <laughs>
seven-time U.S. Open Pipe Band Champions. They competed in the 2022 British Pipe Band Competition in Scotland and are planning to return to Scotland in 2024. Your Elma College Pipe Band.
please welcome to the track the Kilty Dance Company. Street. Yep. Yep. And 
this time, we ask that you turn your attention to the scoreboard to meet today's Alma College projected starter. On the defensive line. Jerome Robertson, Pontiac, Michigan. Evan Mativa, Midland, Michigan. Hunter Sanderson, Perry, Michigan. Jalen Dunwoody, Detroit, Michigan. At linebacker. Odin Sopardini, Traverse City. Gage Nelson, Stanish, Michigan. Eli Jackson, Morristown, Michigan. At defensive back. Drew Hom, Alma, Michigan. Bryce Fredenberg, Bay City, Michigan. Rafael Garland, Gross Point, Michigan. Jack Kretschmar, Marine City, Michigan. On the offensive line. Reese Townsend, Portland, Michigan. Maddox Moselle, St. Clair, Michigan. JB Couch, Elma, Michigan. Lance Rademacher, Paul Mosvalia. Owen Dank, Loverville, Michigan. At receiver. Devin Frenchko, St. Joseph, Michigan. Zach Paul, St. John's, Michigan. Noah Jansen, Mattawan, Michigan. Nate Webb, Cedar Springs. In the backfield. Eddie Williams, East Point, Michigan. Carter St. John, Zion's going in. On special teams. Bryce Kemp, Traverse City, Michigan. Joshua Hernandez, Detroit, Michigan. Abram Evans, Romeo, Michigan.
Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Elma Scott's Football Live on Q104.9 WQBX with live video streaming at elmascots.com this afternoon. Homecoming at Balky Field. It's an MIAA matchup between the Elma Scots and the Trine Thunder. I'm Jeff Somerville, Topher Goggin alongside, welcoming you in to the Mercantile Bank Scots pregame show. And Topher, the Scots come in. Riding high, 4-0 on the season, defending MIAA champs, getting ready to begin their defense of that title against the Trine Thunder, and it was really a game against Trine on Trine's homecoming last year where the Scots announced that they were here and for real. What can we expect out there today? That's a fair statement. A, a signature win for Jason Couch last year going down to Angola, jumping out to a 37-7 lead. Eddie Williams had 185 rushing yards. Perhaps if you were to break that whole game down into one drive, it's when the Scots went 99 yards to a touchdown. Davin Reif quarterbacking both bookends of it, the traditional offense in the middle, and Nate Webb capping that off with a touchdown uh, that just kind of served notice, as you said, that the Scots were for real and they haven't looked back. Finishing last season 10-0 and in the regular season, winning a playoff game, advancing to the second round, and, and keeping that up, obviously, as the season has started. I think Elma, on paper, expected to be here 4-0 and today. Yes. They proved some things last week against Wittenberg at the same time. Got a few things that they need to clean up. Trine comes in at 2-2 two and two in the perfect position to catch a team off guard oh, yes. because this is a Trine team that is better than 2-2. Two and two. It is not every day that you find a quarterback that is a fifth year, a five year starter. Yeah. Not a fifth year senior, a five year starter. Because of the COVID year, Alex Price, who moved into the starting job as a freshman, gets his fifth year at the helm of this Thunder offense for Coach Troy Abs. It's an experienced team with dangerous wide receivers. They have perhaps not played as well on defense this year as they would have liked. I think that the Scots who come in averaging 57 a game are going to feel like they ought to find the end zone more than once or twice today. Uh, but this is a trying squad that will take advantage if Elma is not at its best defensively, so Elma's got to be ready to go. Yeah, if you're the Scots, uh, you've got to play well both sides of the ball from the word go. Uh, Trying would like nothing more than to come in here and spoil the Scots homecoming, much like Elma did to them a year ago. Uh, going down into that game, Trying was favored. They were riding high. Uh, they thought that they would kick off their league season with a nice homecoming victory, and really, Elma ran them off the field in the first half of that game, and you know, try and kept it competitive a little bit in the second half, but uh, the game was never in question. And the Scots just, uh, like we said, really served notice at that time. And they've been riding high ever since. Like you said, a couple things to work on from last week. Uh, penalties, they had trouble getting off the field because of some, some big penalties uh, at very untimely situations. Uh, when they would get off the field on a third down, an Odin Safardini interception got called back. Uh, so... You know, just cut down the penalties, shore things up a little bit defensively, uh, which is crazy to say with as good as the Scots' defense is thought to be. Uh, but the offense hasn't given us anything to say shore up, so... Sure, yeah. I mean, Elma continuing to force turnovers at just an unbelievable they rate. Plus 12 on the season. Currently second in the country in fumble recoveries. First in interceptions. First in total turnovers. Forced second in overall turnover margin. That's pretty fair. But the penalties, I think, merit discussion. They because do. that was not an isolated one-game thing. No. It's been a problem all four games. <clears throat> 39 penalties through four weeks for Elma. That's a lot. Of 239 teams in Division Three. the Scots are 232. There are only seven more penalized teams in the country than Elma so far. However, it's been a struggle for Trine as well. Trine averaging just under 80, or sorry, just under 90 penalty yards a game. The Scots 97, Trine about 88. So both these teams really need to clean up the, the, the yellow laundry on the field uh, a little bit. Uh, just because, you know, Elma kind of saw last week how... That could be costly it in a could. closer game. Elma was out to a 41-7 to lead before any of that really reared its ugly head. But uh, that is definitely something that you're not going to be able to get through a whole uh -huh. MIAA season picking up 10 penalties and a game. Interestingly enough, most of the penalties last week especially were all on the defense. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think the offense had maybe a holding and then a couple of false starts, and that was it. Everything else was a defensive penalty. I know the Scots pride themselves on flying around, getting into the football, being aggressive defensively. It's just reining in that fine line to between the whistles is what Coach Couch said on Wednesday when we talked to him. Uh, he wants to do it between the whistles, and yeah. that's what he emphasized this week, I know. If Elma can do that, they're going to have 
you know, a very good chance of winning a homecoming football game here. But like you said, you cannot take this Trine Thunder team lightly. This is a very, very good team that if they gelled a little bit on the defensive side of the ball, could be great. Yeah, Trine is 2-2 two and two with effectively one bad quarter right. in the fourth quarter last yeah. week against an undefeated 3-0 and Hanover team. Coach Troy Abbs, Alma Mater, took it to Trine in that fourth quarter to turn a 17-14 game into a 38-14 win. But other than that, Trine's other loss is by two points to Rose Holman. Trine and Rose have played three times with the margin of victory being 1-1-2. One, one, and two. Oh, wow. You want to talk about two evenly matched teams, apparently. I guess but, so. But Trine is not far from being a 3 and one team that is effectively an undefeated team, right. but for one quarter. Right. Exactly. So, you know, you're absolutely right. And this is something that we talked about as the Scots take the field, that expectations are just so different now. It yeah. used to be that if you, you know if you schedule Trine on homecoming, a team that has been very, very successful, last won the MIAA in 2018, but perennially near the top of the standing since joining the conference in the early 2000s, you'd say, that'd be great we could, if we could win homecoming against Trine. Yeah. Wow. Now it's a situation that with Elma saying, you know, basically, we're looking for an MIAA title in a playoff berth. You have to win this game because if you don't, you need help from somebody else exactly. along the way. Exactly. Otherwise, you can't get there. So uh, the, the, just a complete change in the culture and the expectations. And we've yet to see how Elma will face that down against a truly strong opponent. Exactly. Wittenberg, the strongest that they've faced so far, but it steps another notch up the ladder. Oh, today. at least a notch, maybe two notches. Uh, combined with trying being a great football team and league play starting things you know just get a little bit tighter for you no question about that and those expectations on these scots not something that they've really had to deal with in the past so no, and, I'm interested today. And, and to that's see this. one spot where I think Carter St. John's high school experience becomes relevant. Oh, yes. that he played in a state championship game, won a state championship at Bishop Chittard down in the greater Indianapolis area. He's actually got a couple of high school teammates on the opposing sideline today. But playing in those kinds of games at least gets you used to that kind of pressure, that kind of must win yep. situation. And he goes right through from that high school experience to starting as a freshman for Elma last year. Of course, what a game that Carter had last week, current MIAA Offensive Player of the Week and on the D3Football.com Team of the Week. 22 of 25 passing with a couple of throwaways. Yeah. Four touchdowns. Again, he's had four touchdowns so many times, but 323 passing yards. Did throw his first interception of the year. Did get sacked for the first time in the year. Jeff, Elma has given up one sack in four games. Everyone's concerned that you know, the offensive line was the place that had to be retooled. Yep. One sack in four games. There are only four teams in the country that have not allowed a sack so far through four weeks worth of football. So Elma has protected him exceptionally well. We're going to go through some stats in a minute between Alex Price from Trine and Carter St. John. It's an impressive comparison. Harrison. Pause now for the playing of the national anthem by the Kilty Marching Band. We'll be back to Elma College right after this.
four minutes left till kickoff here from Elma College. Topher Gog and Jeff Somerville with you live on the roof of the press box at Bulky Field as the Kilty Marching Band finishes up their pregame entertainment. We will soon have a coin toss and homecoming football between the Scots and the Trine Thunder. Elma comes in ranked number 15 in the coaches poll, 19th according to d3football.com. Uh, second year in a row that they have made an appearance in those polls and now all the way to number 15 according to the coaches but trying of course would like nothing more than to ruin that we of course talk all the time about the numbers that elma has of approximately 185 kids on the roster trying their full group somewhere in the realm of 240. Uh, not all of those folks, of course, making the bus ride up from Angola, probably just a little under 100 on that far sideline today. Uh, but not surprising that Coach Troy Abs could find 22 guys that could go out and take a field for him well, and know a thing or two about moving a football. No, that is not surprising at all. And uh, they'll, they'll put out a very, you know, talented and, and veteran lineup uh, when you look up and down a lot of juniors a lot of seniors like you said price fifth year starting um championship quarterback in high school we saw him lead a, a very scary reading team yeah, to, uh, division eight uh, that was state championship they had a couple of massive gentlemen who were yes. incredible athletes on that team if you look at trine the question marks are on the defense and on special teams, allowing yep. 423 yards per game, That's 148 on the ground, 275 through the air. Of course, Elma, with a pretty balanced attack, will be able to pick and, uh -huh. and choose how they want to try to move the football. But almost 28 points per game allowed so far. That's certainly more than Trine would want. Contrast that to Elma, 12 points per game, despite giving up uh, you know, bigger numbers with 28 to Wittenberg last week. The other struggles for Trine is in the kicking game. They are 0 for 5 kicking field goals this year. A couple of missed extra points as well. They have spun the wheel of kickers, still trying to find the right recipe. They list three on their depth chart. Right. As the teams get ready, here's your announcement of the coin toss. Uh, he's nope. not, he's without, not too interested in his microphone today, but Trine has won the coin toss, and they have elected to defer their choice to the second half, which uh, teams recently have tried to go on offense against the Scots first, which is fairly head-scratching and... I think Elma's taken a little bit of offense to that and uh, I, some I, quick three and outs. Yeah, well, I don't have this stat, but I would be curious to know over the last season and a half, so the four games this year, the 11 last year, how many times the opposition's first possession has ended in a turnover? A lot. Because I think it's at least four. Yeah. And maybe more than that, where the Scots have turned the other team over on their first possession. Instead, Elma will go to the offense. That means we'll see Carter St. John. 59 of 82, 970 yards. That's a 72% completion clip. 14 touchdowns against one interception. But we wanted to do that quarterback comparison. Yep. Here's what we're looking at. These are all NCAA level stats. It's not just conference stuff. This is NCAA. Price from Trine, third in touchdowns. St. John from Alma, fourth. Passing yards, Price sixth. St. John, 34th in the country. Price ninth in passing efficiency. St. John, second. Price, third in the country in points responsible for, so rushing touchdowns, passing touchdowns, the whole nine yards. St. John, fifth in the country mm. in that. Price, seventh in yards per attempt in the country. And St. John, third in yards That's per attempt. That's incredible. That's out of 239 teams. And those guys are in the You've top ranks in couple all of, of those ones. categories. A couple of special ones out there for sure. And, you know, you, it's easy to forget. Carter's only a sophomore. <laughs> it's real easy to forget. Fair point. Alex Price, of course, is not. He is a fifth-year senior back courtesy of his COVID year. Trine gets ready to boot it away with Dan Le Hernandez getting ready to tee it up at the 35. Zach Poff joins Devin Frenchko deep. Frenchko has handled most of the kickoff returns this year, a 27-yard average, long of 41 this season, but a pair of 99-yard-plus returns, four touchdowns in his career. He is dangerous, and we'll see whether Trine wants to kick it his way. Elma's going to put six guys up. They I mean, are. They're a little suspicious. They are very suspicious. As to what might happen here. And that is, that's the hands team. Yeah. We got Cole Thomas oh, yeah. up there. Drew Hum is up there as part of that unit. So at least a partial hands team. Gage Kruger on the far side. They think Trine is up to something, and they're going to make Lay Hernandez kick it deep. That's Comes the wrong deep. guy to kick it to. French go from the four-yard line. He'll leave from the left side back to the right. Outside the numbers at the 20, turns it up. 25, runs out of room, takes a high blast, and goes out of bounds there. Yeah, I got a hold or a block in the back on that as well. So the Scots will not have good field position at all to start out. 
Vinnie Ambrose made that stop, a transfer from the University of Indianapolis, but we'll see how far this goes back. They're going to move the flag itself up to about the 25. So it looks like Elmo will start somewhere around the 15. Expect we'll start with Eddie Williams out there in the backfield, 43 carries, 199 yards. Jordan Williams, 24 carries, 173 yards. It was a hold on the Scots. So right away, first play, the hanky flies. Yeah, remember, that was that was one of our key points. If you missed the pregame show, Elmo being penalized nearly 10 times per game for almost 100 yards, trying not much better, 87.8 penalty yards per game. Bright sunshine here, a warm homecoming day at the end of September, and offense ready to go. Carter St. John pulls it back from Eddie Williams, rolls right, looks long, and Nate Webb is uncovered at the 40-yard line. He fell down but made the catch. It was a touchdown. If that ball's got a little more air under it, Webb had to come back to it, but still a healthy oh pickup of 33. Nate was completely uncovered. Two men went with Cole Thomas instead. Trying busted coverage. Lucky that Webb could not keep his feet. Play action again. Pass out in the flat. This is Thomas into trying territory. Jammed out of bounds at the 45 for a gain of about seven. Scott's cranking the tempo as they are prone to do. And trying on its heels and frankly lucky not to be behind in this yeah, game already. Exactly. Webb splits out wide to the left along with Kruger and Poff for Scott's possession. And off into the middle. Eddie Williams sidestep to his left and into a number of waiting arms after a gain of just one. So bring up third and two. Gibson makes that stop. Be important for trying to get off the field here. I wouldn't be surprised to see this ball stay in St. John's hands on this play. Carter has kept it with his feet many times this year. 20 carries, 138 yards, couple of scores. Found the end zone for Elma's second touchdown last week. Three receivers against only two defensive backs to the right, and that's where Elma wants to go. It's Frenchko. Both DBs locked up with box, and Frenchko off to the races. The 30, the 25, the 20. Devin Frenchko scores. It's simple math. Three is greater than two, and the Scots are in the end zone. 44-yard touchdown pass. St. John to Frenchko, and you and I were able to see that from where we were standing, and I think Carter saw it, too, down on the uh, field. Just a quick little out to Frenchko, and Devin's got such great speed. He just went down the sideline untouched. Poff with a great downfield block. The Scots overload the swinging gate all to the left. Remember, very creative on extra points. They'll often go for two. They snap it to Kruger up the middle. They're going to try to run for this. Instead, they throw it up over the top, and it's caught for a touchdown. By the center. Conversion by the center, who is an eligible receiver in that formation, and Elmo leads it 8 to nothing. We'll be back to Balky Field right after this. What a start to homecoming for the Elma Scots. They go 85 yards in a minute and 16 seconds and get the two-point conversion caught by Reed Seabase, the long snapper on the extra point. Elma this time puts everybody over to the side to make the center an eligible receiver. Gage Kruger, a former high school quarterback who has oftentimes run out of that situation, takes two steps forward to fake the run. When the defense comes up, throws right over the top, two-point conversion good and it's eight to nothing. A long pass to Nate Webb and then Devin French go another lengthy touchdown grab, his fifth of the season as Hernandez boots it away. Trying from the one yard line as he'll speed up the right hand side and a flag down, this one's probably coming back. It's gonna be very similar to how the Scots started, I believe. Ray flag is at almost the exact same spot. Rayshon Street, kick returner for Trine. And the Thunder will start from similar field position to Alma. Alex Price, as we said, 78 of 119 will get the penalty call. Holding on return team number 80 was the announcement. Yep. The, uh, the range on the wireless uh, headset for the official, he was way over about the 25-yard line on the far side of the field, so he didn't come in real well. But good enough, we heard him, and it is the exact same thing uh, that the Scots yep. face, now the Thunder offense faces. Anyway... 
Price on the season, 1,294 passing yards through for over 400 yards in back-to-back -back weeks. 426 set a trying record, came back the next week against Franklin. 439 and seven touchdowns in a win. He's got Zane Kirby out of Sweester, Indiana back there. With him in the shotgun as things get underway, we'll tell you about this trio of trying receivers in Connor Arthur, Kyle Lawson, Kale Lawson, pardon me, and Brandon Klein, who have some of the most similar numbers that you can possibly imagine. It's crazy in their respective senior years. First down from the 15. Scott's shift along the defensive line. Go on the second clap. Price sits in the pocket. They want a long one down the sideline. And a leaping grab by Arthur out to the 42. A shirt-handed tackle by Garland brings him down, but a quick strike. And that moves Connor Arthur into the career receiving speed by a substantial margin. These three came into today, Jeff. Connor Arthur, 1,399 career yards. Kale Lawson, 1,395 total yards. Brandon Klein, 1,405. Ten yards separating three guys at the 1,400-yard mark. First down, trying off the completion. Straightaway drop from Price. Good protection. Now it collapses. He'll take off. Head to his left. He's got good feet and stumbles. Um, feet might not be that good. He usually you spoke too soon. Usually has good feet, but he tackles himself. Tripped at the over the 45-yard line there. Price Had a blocker out in front. 81 rushing yards on the season for Price. Klein heads off for second down and seven. Lawson wide to the left. And then Arthur in the slot to that side. Trying to bulk up the left side of the line and short side of the field. Kirby is the running back. Not a lot of depth in the backfield for Trine. It will primarily be Kirby or Jermaine Williams. And off into the middle. Cut back lane bouncing off one player and right into the arms of Eli Jackson. And as soon as I say it will be one of those Somebody new guys. We see a new face in number 21 which would be Quentin Gordon, a junior out of South Bend with very limited. Yeah, he doesn't show up on yep. the two deep at all. And he does come off now, and Jermaine Williams comes back. And he's going to line up at a receiver, actually. They're going to go five wides on third and three. Try needs the 47 of Elma, 8 nothing Elma already. Empty backfield for Trine. As they look at their first third down, Trine Stellar 60% conversion rate on third downs in the top 10 in the country. Price ready to go, looking right over the middle. Pump fake, pulls it down, takes off on the run, then throws late. He's got it complete to Lawson along the left sideline. will just run out of bounds, but has the first down at the 35. Good improvisation, because I don't think Price could have gotten to the marker on his feet. No, I don't think he would have either, but he did a great job to keep the play alive, and Lawson just found a soft spot in that Scott's defense along the sideline. Kind of got lost over there. And a first down for the Thunder. They're moving it nicely, just as the Scots did. Trying looking to answer Elma's quick touchdown just a minute and 16 seconds into this first quarter. Price looks right, slings it out there into the flat. Soft coverage off the fingertips and a dangerous miss there by Connor Arthur. Only Arthur should have caught that one. Only because Drew Hum was coming up to make the stop was he not able to camp in behind that. Otherwise, that had interception written all over it. It was a long throw, and it hung in the air for quite a while across the field. And I think Arthur might have just mistimed his leap a hair. Sun, not an issue for Arthur on that catch. He's looking sort of the safe direction. Teams throwing the ball from what would be the southeast to the northwest. Receivers are going to be looking right back into the sun for a little while. Second and 10, trying from the Elma 35, 8 0 Elma. Give to Williams. He heads to the left, finds a little bit of space, runs into his own blocker, Lawson, and then heads out of bounds at the 25. Going to be very close. Should have a first He's down. Yeah. Line, this linesman's short. Let's wait and oh, see. Oh, yeah. Oh, they. The head linesman is a yard shy. Yeah, he is. He's a yard short. Great blocking by Lawson out there from the receiver position, though. Lawson, a fifth-year senior. Klein and Arthur also seniors. Not sure if they are in fifth years or not. I didn't check, to be honest. Third down and one. Trying trailing eight to nothing, but looking for an important response here in the early going. Jermaine Williams with Alex Price in the shotgun. Fake it to him, throw over the middle, a little square in, caught Garland, quick tackle against Lawson, but down to the 15-yard line and another first down. Kind of picking on Garland a little bit over there. Well, you see all of these trying receivers dangerous enough that Elma's right. giving them pretty big cushions. You have to. Price, in his fifth year at the helm, obviously good enough to pick that apart. Kirby returns 
as the running back now. First down from just outside the 15-yard line. Price a late look over to the sidelines. Play clock still has 14, plenty of time to adjust the formation. They go Kirby into the middle where he's got a huge hole, stumbles across the 10-yard line, upended at the goal line, falls across, and it's a Zane Kirby touchdown run, his 26th career touchdown. It's a 15-yard touchdown run, and Trine with a wonderful answer to the Scots touchdown. Now, they're going to kick the extra point here, it looks like. It's always a question. It's a big question if you chase points this early in the game or not. The only reason that you might argue against it is because of Trine's struggles in the kicking game. But Anthony Hentz, 9 of 10 on extra points this year. Will come and try to make it an eight to seven matchup. Good snap, good hold, kick. Not Got a lot blocked. on it, partially blocked, but good. good. And try and gets it through eight to seven midway through this first quarter. We'll be back to Bulky Field in a moment. Fascinating start to this football game. Jeff Elma just speeds down the field. Could have done it in two plays, but for Nate Webb falling down as he made a catch, but then Devin Frenchko with a lengthy touchdown grab, 44 yards on that one. Trine comes back a little more of a sustained drive. They took about four minutes, uh, three and a half, I guess, to get there, uh, but capping it off with a nice Zane Kirby touchdown run, and so far the offense is beating the defenses without much question. Which we had a feeling might happen. Both these teams prolific offensively, combining for an average of 97.3 points per game and both near 500 yards per game. Elma at 493, Trine at 481. Trine throwing for an average of 334. Ooh. Nothing like a couple 400-yard yeah. games to help you, help you do that. But we'll see what possession number three brings. Clay Hernandez drives it this time to Poff, who boots it. The ball is loose all the way back at the three-yard line. Zach Poff goes back, picks it up, and now returns it up the middle. Takes a big hit, keeps his head on. A different helmet from Trine flew off. Two helmets now off. Goodness, Poff tackled at the 10, but not a lot went right there. Poff took a beating, initially lost the catch, tried to catch it up high, and I think it hit his shoulder pad. Yeah. Surprising to see someone as sure-handed as Zach Poff, who has 10 catches, five of them for touchdowns this year. C1 get away. Oh, Scott's with terrible field position again. This time they'll start at the 13. Only took him a minute and 16 seconds to go 85 yards, so extrapolate that to 87 yards, and that's what they're looking to do. Elmo with a tight end, three wide to the left. Carter St. John, handoff Eddie Williams, runs weak side across the 15 to the 17, where he's stacked up by a host of thunder tacklers. Jalen Page amongst... The crew, Skyler Williams, Warren. just taking those tough yard or the tough yards where they were available for him, got nearly five. Elma has not had a 100-yard rusher individually this season, but averaging over 200 yards as a team. Elma shifting its alignment. Oh, they had to make a substitution line, along yeah. the O line. A bit of confusion there, but they get everything set. Carter St. John will keep it himself on second and five. Try to get outside to the left, looking for the corner. Can he get away from Van Hoosen? He can't. St. John keeps it. Van Hooser, pardon me. It's an R, not an N at the end. Second leading tackler on this trying unit. Stops Carter St. John after a two-yard gain. Brings up third and three. It's Reese Townsend that had to come off for the Scots. Okay, well, that's a substantial yeah, loss. a huge loss. Second team all-conference selection last year, academic all-district kid. Third down and three, high snap. St. John rolling to his right, doesn't have a lot of receivers out there, and he's going to be sacked for just the second time this season, and that's Gibson, now 18 and a half career sacks. That play just didn't look quite no. right after the snap was awkward. I think it broke off what would have been a little drag route from Webb, which was the dump off that St. John was looking for, and Carter just ends up eating and it. And a three and out like that, where Trine's now going to get great field position, you can feel the energy from the Trine sideline. Well, and that's just how important it was for Trine to absorb that punch yep. and come back with its own score. Trailing by one, Elma up eight to seven. Tristan Burris back deep to return. 
along with Street. But they are just across midfield as Bryce Kempf boots it away. Only one punt last week. That went for 50 yards. This one won't unless it gets a long roll. Yes, it lands in the zone 40, and it's going to roll and roll and roll all the way to the 33-yard line. Bryce Kempf, the master of topspin on that one, and drives trying back into more normal field position with 8.05 eight to play in the first quarter. That had, uh, it didn't look like it had a bunch of top spin on it when it was in the air, but just got that proper bounce on the turf. and Got to get the point of the football to land the right way. But Trine wins the exchange there and gets some pretty good field position for that offense to come back out there. They get the first big stop of the game defensively. Yeah, after watching the first two drives, you get the feeling that stops might be few and far yes, between. they are going to be at a premium. Alex Price, three for four, 53 yards on the drive. Kirby got the touchdown run. Scots have flipped their corners now, and Drew Hum has come to the near side. Price in a two-back set this time. As Trine opens up their second possession, trailing by a point. Soferdini lurking in the middle. Little delayed handoff into the middle and slowly progressing for a pickup of about three. And it's going to be Nichols. Run game looks pretty good from the Thunder so far. Just the seventh carry for Nichols this year. And interesting to see Trine going so deep into the they stable are. of running backs as they don't have many guys with more than single-digit carries. We may see Salim Felder as well, number 22. We'll try to keep up with that for you. Second down and about seven from the 37. Price with time over the middle. Lobbed into a lot of traffic, but caught by Brandon Klein. And now he weaves through the entire traffic to the sideline. Goes out of bounds with Gage Nelson in hot pursuit. But Elmo with four DBs in the neighborhood. And somehow number 18 is the one who comes away with it. Yeah, and that ball didn't come out of Price's hand well either. Still completed it. That's a... Uh, not a good sign for that Scott secondary, indeed. Trying carving Elma's defense up here early on. Midpoint of the first quarter, just past eight to seven Elma, thanks to a two-point conversion, but trying, looking for its first advantage of the day. John Clampett into the slot as a receiver. 11 catches for him this year. Price surveys the field, allows the play clock to run down under five. And down under two, in fact, before giving it to Kirby. Runs up the middle where he scored the touchdown. Not near as much space this time, but down to the 29 for a four-yard pickup. Offensive line of the Thunder is getting a good consistent push, though. It's a good point. This is an experienced trying offensive line. Four seniors and a junior, and plenty of size. A couple of 300-pounders on the left side. Elma, of course, rotates their defensive line. Sanderson Swiger in there at the moment. Robertson on the right-hand side from Elma's perspective. Second and seven from the Elma 29. Elma leads it eight to seven, trying on the move on their second possession of the afternoon. Lawson in motion. Three receivers to the top of the field. Price looks that way, throws an interception, and look out, Jack Kretschmar. He's got a bunch of pick sixes, as does his brother, and he's going to add another one. 70 yards later, Kretschmar in the end zone, and the Scots lead 14 to 7. That's what they do. The bend but don't break, and Kretschmar just baited Price into that one. That's not a mistake Alex Price makes. Right. Kretschmar's brother, Max, two pick sixes back in his day. And now Jack adds one this afternoon. Now watch the alignment again, side by they side. They don't have it. Trine doesn't have it right now. Sea base. Trine does not have it. Oh, and they're off sides too. Trine they just encroached, but the ball hasn't been signaled ready for play yet. So there's no penalty. Hernandez, the kicker, is back there with Kruger, who is a converted quarterback. They don't have it lined up. And they're going to snap it and try again, rolling to the right. Kruger's going to run for it, and Easily. it's another two-point conversion. They don't have the personnel in quite the right numbers. You just don't see this. Elma has changed it just enough have. from what they've showed earlier in the season that Trine hasn't figured it out. 16-7, to 7, Elma here, still first quarter. We'll be back.
second career defensive touchdown for Jack Kretschmar puts Elma out to a 16 to seven lead on their 11th interception of the season leading the NCAA. And it came at a time when things were going it the does. wrong direction for it Elma's did. defense. It really did. And just like that, you get the pick six and then you get the two point conversion. You're up two scores. Something we talked about a lot in our broadcast last night of the high school game is how important these conversions can be. Last night, we saw Elma kick a bunch of successful extra points while their opponent last night, Bridgeport, was no good on all of their two-point conversions. It made a huge difference in the ball game. Opposite here, the Scots have two two-point conversions, and that gives them a two-score lead. Well, and, you know, back in the day, Beale City used to go for two despite having the ability to kick. And they would do it at least on their first two touchdowns, almost under the assumption that, hey, we're going to score twice before the game's over. As long as we get one of two, we break right, even. even. And if we happen to get them both, you could run into that extra touchdown situation, just like Elma has today. First down trying from the 25 off the touchback from Hernandez. His seventh of the season, they'll hand it off into the middle, looking for a little bit of space as Jermaine Williams bounces it outside to the right. All the Scots linebackers giving chase. Jackson fans a little bit, Dunwoody does not. And finally, the whistle blows and bails Jermaine Williams out before he took a big hit. He's going to end up with a gain of four out to the 29. That he is. Heck of a run, really. Williams actually a state of Michigan product from Cassopolis, down in the southwest corner of the state, not far north of Notre Dame. After the pick six, Crutchmar gets his possession off here, it looks like. Beaudry back in there for him. That's how interchangeable these parts are, though, for the Scott secondary. Brock Beaudry is one of the best out there. Three tackles on the season for Beaudry. Trenton, Michigan product. Second and seven for Trine. 16 to seven, Elma. Price, who continues to go on a hard count of second or third clap in the gun, rolls to his left, finds some time, throws over the middle. It's a little bit underthrown, but complete into Elma territory. Loss, and again, Beaudry flies back, makes his fourth tackle of the season. But Alex Price is finding the soft spots in this Elma coverage. He is, and the Scots aren't getting home with four uh, rushing, which is something they've done all year long, is, is heavy pressure. So far, that trying old line, like you said, a couple 300-pounders uh, and very experienced. They're giving Price time to find that soft spot. He doesn't miss it. Elma 15 sacks for 102 yards on the season. Evan Eastman has three multiple. Scott's players have two. Run up the middle. Williams hit at the 40 and beaten down at the 39, but a five-yard pickup. Evan Mativa in there on that stop. He'll head to the bench. As Jack Campbell comes in. Uh, four yards, it seems, on every first down right now for Trine, which is keeping the playbook wide open. Now, and that has something to do with why they're a 60% third down team. You yeah. know that teams that have that conversion rate is because they are facing third and short on a regular basis. This is second and six, 4.13 to play in the first quarter, 16 to seven, Elma. Price spins the football, fakes it over the middle, and then throws to Lawson, complete down to the 28, and another first down. And Cale Lawson developing into the favorite target so far today. That's his fourth catch of this first quarter. Yeah, they've gone to him on the soft side each time. He's the only receiver lined up left, and that's where they're going so far. Scott's moved Drew Hum over there to try and counter. Klein more of the possession guy. Connor Arthur, the big play downfield guy. But Lawson doing the damage for Trine as they look to answer again, 16 to seven and a flag from the sidelines and a false start on Trine. I did not see it, but they're gonna All lose right, It's gotta five. be the receiver. Linesman on the far side called that one. Scots have put Chandler Holloway in at the other corner. Lawson was veteran an, presence in there. Lawson was an interesting story in high school, Jeff. He was a star receiver on a pace to set a bunch of records, and then they switched him to quarterback as a senior. Sometimes so, you have to. You have to put your best athlete at quarterback yeah. to have success. Uh, there are some high schools that, that don't do that, and you see them struggle sometimes. Well, if you're wondering if it worked, he rushed for 1,600 yards and 30 <laughs> touchdowns and was named the small yep. school offensive player of the year in his area. So. I was going to say, I'll bet it did just watching him out there. right. First down and 15 off the penalty. Kirby up the middle, plunges through a number of Scott's tacklers back to the 28, gets the penalty back, and will make it second down and 10. Three minutes to play in the first quarter, 16 to seven, Elma on a beautiful homecoming afternoon. Still see a few folks out in the parking lot, listening to the action more than watching it, but a lot of folks here inside 
the gates at Balky Field. Second and 10 for trying. Scott's bring a little pressure. The pocket holds, thrown too high, and a diving try incomplete, almost intercepted. Holloway had a play on it at about the eight yard line, and Price got away with one there. It's odd, the throws that Price has gone to the right have been where he struggled. Uh, that was the pick six. That was the one that stayed in the air a little too long and went off the receiver's hands. Everything he's thrown left has been right on the money. Something to watch yep. as the game goes on. Price has been intercepted six times this year. Or now well, seven, he has to now throw seven. quite a few, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's in 119 attempts coming in, and then the interception to Kretschmar today. Four down territory here for the Thunder. They wouldn't try a field goal from here, I don't think. Not, not at 0 for 5 kicking on the season. Trouble with the snap, drop, now it turns into a counter in all kinds of space. Running, leaping, attempted to tackle, no good, a cut inside and all the way down to the seven yard line. What a play there by Taron Crawford Jr. I tell you what, that's a great job by Crawford to wait. Yes. Because the timing got thrown all off on it when the snap was dropped. Crawford could have very easily panicked and just started moving, moving or tried around. To fall on the football. Or tried to fall on the football. No, he waited for his quarterback to get back into the play, then ran the counter action, and by that time it was wide open to the left, first and goal thunder. Sure, Scott's were jumping after the football, seeing it there on the ground. It turns into a big gain, first and goal trying. Elma up 16 to seven. Too wide to the right, Lawson alone on the left where he's been most of the day. Another new running back up the middle to about the six. And that's going to be Salim Felder, who we told you about. He's out of Port St. Lucie, Florida, same high school as Frederick Griffin III on this trying roster. That's his fifth carry of the year. New number for him today into number 10, listed as 22 on the main trying rosters. Here, we'll go back to Kirby now. Really cycling those backs in and out, in and out. It's one of the challenges with a roster as deep as Trines is they have so many shared numbers that they actually have to change them oh, yeah. based on who joins the travel roster because you can't have two guys with the same number on the field at the same time. Twins to each side, second and goal from the seven. A little bit of short motion to the left. Price sits in the pocket, lobs it high, too high for Lawson who was well covered. Fredenberg had a hand on him. Yeah, I don't know if he thought Lawson was going to get a little bit deeper or not, but Fredenberg uh, just kind of had him obscured. Uh, yeah. my, I, I would interpret that as a semi throwaway. Maybe so. I'm throwing this up high. If my guy can jump even higher than I think he can, yeah. it's a touchdown, and if not, we'll try third down. A third and goal from the seven for the Thunder here. Scott's looking to force a field goal try. Which now I'm almost certain Trine would attempt a field goal. I would think so. Clampett comes on as the fourth wide receiver in the right side slot. Scott's all spread out. Seven men across the two-yard line and four at the line of scrimmage. They could run up the middle if they wanted. Price going to wait in the pocket. Pressure from Robertson along for the Eastman. Gets away from that. Keeps the play alive at the 15. Heaves it late into traffic. Almost picked off. Dropped in the end zone by Soferdini. Could have ended the threat. And Price forced that one. Probably should have put that one about seven lanes deep yes, on the track. Yes, he should have. So they will bring the field goal unit out and saw Ferdini just about had a gift in the end zone there. Odin already with three interceptions on the year, a fourth that was nullified by penalty. This will be Hentz for his first field goal attempt on the season. His extra point was partially blocked, but good. Wouldn't have been good from here. 25 yard attempt. A little bit of a high snap, no pressure from the Scots. That one's boomed, That's no great trouble kick. at all. Back into the steeplechase area. 16 to 10, and Elma holds trying to a field goal. And we will be back to Balky Field right after this.
Try and runs a very effective drive, but sputters a bit in the red zone, and they're only a 65% red zone team. And I think that just having a little less space to operate decreases the threat of those three receivers, and Elmo was able to slam the door, force the field goal, 16 to 10 off the try and kick. Poff, who fumbled the last kickoff, no trouble with this one from the 12. Waiting for a hole to open. Now accelerates at the 30. Outside, Lay Hernandez gets a piece of him at the 40, but Poff runs blockers. through. Look out, down to the 30, the 25, a blocker in front. Zach Poff redeems himself from a fumble to the end zone, and Elma scores again. 90-yard kick return for touchdown from Zach Poff. You want to talk about redemption, right there it is, and the Scots strike again, this time on special teams. And I'll tell you what, credit to the Scots to send Zach Poff back out there. Yes. So many times you'll see one miscue and like, oh, okay, somebody else. No, send your talented guy out there who has scored five times already this season as a receiver and into the end zone he goes. They're going to snap it again, run another two-point conversion try. This time Kruger in trouble, but he can throw, drops it off, Got and it. it's caught again. The Scots <laughs> out a flag. Now, hold on. Let's wait and see. Did the Scots it, line up He must up have been illegally? ineligible. He must have been ineligible. This is a potentially an illegal receiver yep. as they throw it. So here comes Hernandez back onto the field. Because he caught it, Elmo will get another yep. crack at this. And now Elmo will kick, obviously, since it will be backed up. Toussaint, who had the catch back against Manchester when Elma first deployed a variety of this formation. What a job by Kruger to keep that play alive. Yeah. Who knew that someone could make a college extra point exciting again? Well, the Scots have done it. Here comes the ruling, but we think we know what this is going to be. Oh, multiple plays. No, we don't. And a hopeful player down the field, number 77. Well, they got called for P.I. too. They'll take the P.I. So it'll make it a bit longer, uh, a bit longer of an extra point here. Yeah. So Owen Denk, a nominally a lineman, went downfield. That's one of the problems with that play getting extended so long. He was not, right. he was in a position that he was not allowed to go downfield, but then pass interference called against Toussaint anyway. Well, what Denk was doing is he was trying to block for Kruger, who was going to run, right. and then when Gage decided to throw, Denk was too far. Yeah, that's something Elmo will have to think about. So now it's a 35-yard extra point for Joshua Hernandez. Hernandez, 20 of 20 on extra points this year, but none this long. No trouble with the length and the direction is fine. Make it 21-21 and a 23-10 Elma lead. Last minute of the first quarter. We're still in the first quarter, and we'll be back for more after this. And that brings the score to the sky. Bill Belichick is a fan of saying that his team needs to play well in all three phases. Elma three touchdowns, one on offense, one on defense, and one on special teams. Hernandez kickoff high and a little bit shorter. Fumbled now at the goal line. Scooped up there, but the Scots come defensively and down at the 12-yard line goes Isaiah Hunter. An interesting, uh, an interesting thing to think about here, Tof, through all this, though. It's been already about 20 minutes at least of real time that the Scots offense has not been on the field. We're going to go through another try and drive plus the end of the quarter. It could be a full half an hour or more of time with that Scots offense standing over on the sideline. That's where you need that, you know, 1982 exercise bike down right. there. Right. I mean, that's really crazy yeah, when but you think You're about right. It. If you're Carter St. John, I might be saying, hey, find a football. Let me just toss this thing back and forth a little bit. 
It's also an opportunity for, I mean, not, not that the Scots need to make offensive adjustments, but no. if they have anything new that they want to draw up, they've had plenty of time to do it. Kretschmar and Fredenberg switch positions defensively, trying to try to throw the bomb and tangle um, up out that's there. That's best interference. Yes. Connor Arthur tripped and fell and everything, and interestingly, Elma wants that call offensively. No, and Anthony no, Spears no, is no, not about no. to get it, but. Arthur's hurt, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Arthur hobbled uh, right, away from uh, that. Maybe a right hamstring or a cramp, one or the other. Okay. It's a substantial loss. 16 catches, 293 yards, three scores, a 21 and a half yard per catch average in his career. Jeez. Pretty impressive. Team captain. Price just threw the home run ball there, and Spears was locked up with him all the way. It's the third different corner that the Scots have tried out there uh, at the number two corner position. Drew Hum's gone all the way so far at the other corner, but we've seen Holloway, we've seen now Spears, and then of course we saw Gardner as well. Play action, we're gonna try the exact same play, picking on Spears again, and it didn't work this time. Did he hold on? Maybe an interception. The ball is in Anthony Spears' hands, and that is Elma football. Pick on that one. Anthony Spears says, find somebody else to bother. What a job. Pretty gutsy to go right back to that. Obviously, they thought they had seen something, and whatever they saw, Spears only needed one try to address it. Scots are humming right now. Second interception of the first quarter. Well, there goes your problem about not getting yeah. the offense mm -hmm. back out. It's still been a while, but here they are. But you're right, it's the end of the first quarter. Jordan Williams hasn't even been on the no, field yet. No, I haven't seen him. It's oh. only the third Scots possession. Play action, looking it's long. Be a touchdown. Trench goes wide open at the 35-yard line. Nobody covering him, and he can walk backwards into the end zone if he wants one play, one score, 29 to 10. 66 yards. Nobody covered Devin Frenchko. The second blown coverage by trying that Elma finds. The first one was to Webb, but he fell down as he made the catch. No falling down that time. St. John wasn't his best throw. He just wobbled it up there because he knew that if he got it anywhere within a 10-yard radius of Devin Frenchko, he had another touchdown. Scots will line up in standard extra point formation now. <laughs> They're out of ideas. Well, you're probably not wrong. Hernandez for a traditional PAT to try to make it a 30-point first quarter. Everybody moved too early, and the kick is blocked, but let's see if there's a flag. I'm going to try to return this. There are no flags on I don't, play. I don't have any idea how that is not a false start, offsides, or both. Not both, obviously, but that did not look right. But the kick blocked the first missed extra point for Hernandez on the year. It won't be a 30-point first quarter unless something happens in the next 30 seconds. We'll take a break and be back. Hernandez boots it in the direction of Street, who's going to let this one go about eight yards deep in the end zone. I want to go back just briefly to that touchdown throw to Frenchko, which is uh, another long touchdown to Frenchko. There have been many of them this year. But I believe that the Scots sat over on the sideline on that play through all of those things that happened out on the field. And I think that, Tof, because on the Poff kick return for touchdown, Frenchko was not out on the field to return that kick. I think they wanted him at full speed to run that fly route on the first play from scrimmage. I think they were over there sitting on that all that time. Could be. His longest catch on the season, 77 yards, had a 64-yard touchdown grab against Wittenberg right before halftime last week. But Elma's managed to score 29 points in the first quarter and punt. Normally yes. when you score 29 and a quarter, you don't have a punt mixed into the middle of that. 
Prine, still first quarter action. Jermaine Williams and runs right, and the middle is getting plugged up. The thing, the thing about it all, though, Trine hasn't played bad football. Now, Price has thrown two very untimely interceptions, and that's about it. They, they have received maximum punishment they for have. a small number of miscues, but they have been big miscues. Uh, an You're interception right. with nobody to stop Jack Kretschmar, a kick return touchdown, and two completely uncovered receivers. I mean, those were defensive breakdowns. They were. That's going to do it for the first quarter. Try and we'll let the quarter run out. So let's play some more commercials. 29 to 10 after one. A heck of a start to homecoming for the Elma Scots. We'll see if they can keep it up in the second quarter. Back to Alma Scott football on 104.9 WQBX. One quarter and 39 points in the books. 29 of them for Alma, 10 for Trine. Trine was moving, looking to take the lead in this game. And they threw an interception to Jack Kretschmar, who took it 70 yards the other direction. Not all that then, long ago. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it wasn't long before it looked like Trine might be an unstoppable offensive juggernaut. But how quickly things can change. Second down and nine as we start the second quarter. Zane Kirby up into the middle for trying to the 30. Pushing forward, he's going to make it to the 33 or 34, close to first down yardage. Doesn't have it. I nice do continue run. to be impressed with that trying offensive line, though. Yes. Yeah, and I think kind of the point that you were trying to make at the end of the first quarter is that the, the play in, play out execution for trying has been excellent. It's just they've, 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 stubbed, massive they've, mistakes. they've stubbed their toe a yeah. couple of times in ways that have been game changing. Third down and three trips to the left. Kirby stands to the right of fifth year quarterback Alex Price out of Reading, Michigan. Price gives it to Kirby, gonna try to find it up the middle. Ball Elma. comes loose and it's gonna be recovered by Elma as Jalen Dunwoody falls on it. It's three turnovers for Elma today. Somebody went in there and put a hat on it. I think it might have been about Jackson. Elma's turnover train continues. They've forced 19 this year after 40 a couple of years that, ago. That ball popped up like a hot potato. It did. Elma came in at plus 12 in turnover margin, now plus 15. Here's an interesting stat, though, coming into today, Jeff. Elma and its opponents had both fumbled nine times, sure. but Elma had lost only two and had gotten six back. Scott's here comes, go up top here. Here comes Jordan Williams for his first appearance of the game. 29 points into it. He'll get the carry. No, they pull it back from him. They go over the top. Clear interference draped on the back of Frenchco. Would have been a touchdown. That, all that Isaiah Hunter could do. Yep. It's a, a good, good penalty. Yeah, exactly. Good penalty by Hunter. Gut check time right here for the Thunder defense, though. Because, I mean, like we say, the Scots offense hasn't really gotten a chance to play a whole lot. And they would like to, they want to be flying here. Spot foul on the P.I. since it yeah. was under 15 yards. It's only a gain of about three or four, but. But in college, it is a first down, which is a difference from what we saw in the high school game last night. Two man train to the top. Cole Thomas at an H back on the left. They're going to a little push pass over to Williams. Cuts inside to the 20 to the tw or to the 30. And then that 29 is where he's shoved out of bounds. Well, not much there so for him. Williams takes the pitch. He's never had great game. success with that little push pass toss. A lot of short It's not been bad. Gains. It, it has not gone the wrong way, but it just they haven't sprung it for a big one yet. It gets you out to the perimeter. Yep. Yeah, and surely that's the goal is to try to speed to the edge. Kruger out front. 
Frenchko on the caboose. They'll throw it to Frenchko on the right at the 30. Kruger whiffs on the block, and Frenchko can't get away. Or can he? Manages to snag three or four yards along the sideline near the 25. But needed a little more help from Kruger. Good work by the trying defenders to get away and anticipate that bubble screen. So third and fairly long for the Scots here. Call it eight. Not a lot of breeze to speak of, but this would be a lengthy field goal. Hernandez's career long is 56, but that was down hurricane, basically. This, this would be into what breeze there is. Correct. So Elman minimally needs yardage to think about a field goal try here. Third down and nine. Deep drop from St. John wants to set up a screen and almost hit Lance Rademacher, his now offensive rough lineman. Carter. But a flag may get Elma the first down they're looking for by a different means. I think they might have got him up in the face mask area. St. John was looking for Thomas, almost hit Rademacher in the head. Lance <laughs> kind of limboed out of the way of it, but I think by then Cole couldn't, couldn't pick up the ball visually to make the catch, but the penalty will overdo all of that. It is a roughing the passer, roughing the personal passer. foul, and that'll be Elma's second first down by penalty on this possession. 29 to 10, 13 minutes to play in the first half here at Elma College. I think they just got Carter up around the face mask there is why that was called a roughing the passer. And uh, this is what happened to the Scots last week defensively is it would look like you're off the field and all of a sudden a third down personal foul penalty yep. marches it down into scoring position. Yeah, Elma managed to not have that happen until the game was well in hand, but that's how a 41 to seven lead turned into a 48, 28 win. First down at the 15, Eddie Williams up the middle down to the 11, give him four tackled by his ankles there. You feel like Eddie Williams always gets four? Yes. I mean, there's never been a back that gets four yards more every, often than every, Eddie Williams. Every single time. Every single Which time. is actually, highly effective. Actually averaging just a little over four. 43 carries, 199 yards. Well, he's yards. been known to pop a couple big yeah. ones, too. As you've often pointed out, four yards, four yards, four yards is a first down. On oh, the other hand, number four is into the end zone with a quarterback keeper to the left, and it's a touchdown for Elma again. And that was Reese Townsend back out on the field with a big pancake on the linebacker. And St. John with a touchdown. Good to see Townsend back out there, yes. and good to see him throwing blocks like that. A little more deliberate of a possession for Elma that time after the fumble recovery by Jalen Dunwoody, got that one started. More points off turnovers and Just more 12, 35 points. still to go in the second quarter. Scott's are rolling it on the Thunder. A lot of pressure and blocked again. They're that ball have is to. live. And they Trine, might get there Trine this time. is thinking about a two point try. They get it pitched down Kruger's the sideline. Kruger lowers the shoulder. Elmo won't love to see Gage Kruger using his shoulder to save two points in a situation like that, but Gage is fine. That was scooped up by Jalen Page, who took it down the sidelines to try to find two for trying, but did not. But Elmo with back-to-back -back extra point and, blocks. And they've been it. blocked bigly, as one might say. I mean, they were uh, there. There wasn't any question that they were going to be blocked. The, let, the first one, we thought there might be some movement, uh, right. but that last one, that was just pure. Yeah, that one came off the edge. So Hernandez, after starting his season four of, or sorry, five of five in the field goal department and 21 of 21 on PATs, gets back-to-back -back kicks blocked. After all our talk about trying being the team that struggles in yeah. special teams kicking, it's Elma with two misfired PATs. On the other hand, they have I don't think either two. of them were on Hernandez, though, really. The coverage just wasn't there. If you looked at the scoreboard right now, you'd say, oh, 35 for the Scots. They must have just, uh, you know, <laughs> Although, routine sevens and not have any idea we, what had happened on the PAT. We saw a field goal made last night through much more pressure than that from, uh, from, Cooper, from Couch. Cooper Couch, Coach Couch's youngest son. Cooper Jr. at Alma High School handles the kicking duties along with play and wide receiver and defensive back. High kick fielded by Street at the nine for trying. He's got a nice surge up the sideline, but oh, Elma hems it in the ball loose again. Did Elma get another one? Was he down? I heard a whistle. I heard a whistle before that ball came out. I think the fans are going to be mighty disappointed, but I did hear a whistle. Rayshon Street coughed it up, but maybe late. They're going to talk about it, which is more than I thought the Scots would get out of this. Elma clearly got the ball at the bottom of the pile. The whistle blew early. It is a clear recovery by the Scots, but I think that whistle blew before the ball was out. Long talk about it, though. Uh, Elma's getting both units assembled, ready to that take the are. field, depending upon who is needed. That is smart. 
God. Long this discussion here. Back breaking for trying. It really would be. The longer you talk, the more likely this is trying ball, right? Yeah, well, based on the referee's not going to make a signal, he's just going to explain. His microphone, Maybe. however, is not working, but I can tell by Ryan Ettinger's reaction that it's going to be an inadvertent whistle. We're going to re kick, is what's going to happen. Interesting. So. They admit that Trine probably did fumble the yep. football and Elmer recovered, but they also heard exactly what I heard up yep. here was that whistle blow before the fumble. Yep. So I think they technically get the call right. It's just real disappointing just, for the Scots. Yeah. Just one of those random moments. It hurts a lot less yep. when it's a 25-point game, but... There's still a ton of football to play, and this trying offense is high-powered. Meanwhile, we talk about Elma had the offense and the defense assembled. They didn't, they didn't have, have special, special teams. teams ready to go, and that's who they need. I really do think they got together and got that call correct, though. So Hernandez will try this again. Street comes off after sort of fumbling that. Replaced, I think, by Burris back deep. That's a liner Scott's straight aren't out of bounds. Like the results yeah. of this. Trying. <laughs> that's the point. Elmo just say, oh, "Why don't we just say he was down?" Yeah, exactly. Trying ends up picking up ten yards and the football out of the exchange, but Elmo with the thirty-five to ten yeah, lead. Like Scotts need to keep the foot on the gas pedal, though. It seems like we've been playing football forever here, but uh, still, twelve thirty-one to go in the second quarter. There's an eternity left here. And like we said, that trying offense can hum. Yeah, it's 252. The, the Elma game last week, first half against Wittenberg, took longer than the University of Michigan's televised yeah, game. Yeah, that's crazy. By a minute or two. 1231 to play in the second half. Or first half. Feels like the second half. Second quarter. And trying, trying to find the magic that they had on their first possession that ended in a Zane Kirby touchdown. Bryson Kirby in the backfield. Brandon Klein, who Elma has slowed to just one catch today in the left side slot. It's been mostly Kale Lawson through the air. Six in the box, five DBs for Elma. Forced a fumble on their previous possession. Price from the pocket, nobody open. Pocket now collapses, running for his life. Throws, sidearms it underneath. Nice toss and completion out there, straight to midfield. Connor Arthur, who we saw hobble off earlier, back out there, makes that grab for a first down. Once again, that's Price keeping the play alive with his feet, and then these veteran receivers finding a spot to get open. It was not relied upon to do that as much in high school when he won a state championship, but a weapon it was well, when it was needed. And he had some weapons around him that he could rely on pretty heavily if he needed to. Reading Michigan native, first down from midfield, throws to the right side, just through the wickets of Arthur that time. Uh, there Price is the victim of a drop. Yeah. Ball was a little low, Arthur wasn't gonna be able to go anywhere with it, but probably will wish he at least hauled it in. Second and 10. Second down back 10. Salim Felder back in at running back. Had one carry earlier this afternoon. Klein and Arthur to the right, second down at midfield, 12 minutes to play, 35 to 10 Elma here so far. Price looking to his left before the snap, hands it off to Felder into the middle, waiting for the hole to open up, which it does. And he gets maybe eight, seven and a half, let's say. Now Jackson's having to make a lot of tackles in this one so far. You know, that was one of the questions that I had about trying defensively is that their two leading tacklers are safeties. Elma won't That's love to see everybody getting through to Jackson, but they'd oh. rather see Jackson than, say, Hogan and right. Kretschmar exactly. making a bunch exactly. of tackles. Exactly. That's already seven tackles for Eli. Well, you know, his tackle number is not as high this year as we've been used to, only 13 on the year coming in. But part of that's been that the defense is the first team defense has just not played a ton of minutes. Third down and three. Price with all kinds of time. Square in. Arthur tipped away by Drew Hum. That's oh and a late flag. They're gonna they're gonna get Kretschmar. Okay, is the, what they're gonna do. On the hit afterwards. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna get Kretschmar. Okay, and that may be fine. Hum with a beautiful left hand reach around to knock that ball out of Arthur's hands, but then on the contact, as you see, Jack Campbell give. Jack Kretschmar a little tap, and Kretschmar tapping his own chest, saying, yep, that one's on me. They may call targeting. That would be unfortunate if it 
happen to end Crutchmar's day. Scott seemed to think it is. Yep. Yep. So Crutchmar's day is done, but he'll have six points to show for it. I think that that's one that uh, if we were at the next level and it was reviewed, uh, it would not stand. I think that... Uh, I have no idea. We don't... <laughs> we, we, we do not have access to the replays up here on the roof. It and, just didn't look real bad to me. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a tough spot because you've got a, a double speed collision effectively because right. you've got Arthur moving towards the top side of the field and you've got Kretschmar moving from the top side of the field and so you add the force of that impact. Personal foul gives Trine a first down. They'll switch to a two back alignment here. With Williams back in. Along with Rubens Joseph. I'm sorry, Joseph Rubens. No, I was right the first time. Got to trust yourself. Play action, rolling right price. Probably going to run with this one because he's got blockers in front, heads to the sideline, ducks out of bounds at about the 22. Price keeps Block it. out there by Joseph on Safardini. Yeah, I was, thought a hanky might fly on that one. It was a very good block. That was a questionable one, to say the least. Six-yard pickup. 11.05 still to play in the second quarter. Trying, looking to respond, now looking at a 25-point deficit. After this game was 8-7 to seven for a period of time with Trine on the move before the Kretschmar interception return. Twin receivers to both sides on second down and four. Price with all kinds of time. Sidearms it over the middle. Leaping grab by Klein at the three. Elma holds him out of the end zone at the oh, low. Oh, no, they did What a terrible call. And of more concern, yeah. Gage Nelson hobbles out of there, and that's a big loss for Elma's defense. Well, Trine is going to get called for an unsportsmanlike penalty here, too. It's a touchdown for Brandon Klein, his seventh of the season. But keep an eye on the Elma sideline as Gage Nelson hobbles over to the tent. There is a flag down. That's an important piece that Elma does not want to lose. Scotts will take it on the kickoff. 35-16 on the... Klein touchdown grab, his 23rd catch of the season. He was seventh in the country in touchdowns coming in, adds another one. Four of those came in Trine's big win against Franklin. And now hence on for the PAT. Third string quarterback, Jimmy Gillette to hold. Wobbly snap put down. Hence gets it up and through. 35-17, still 10 and a half to play in the second quarter. We'll be back after this. Trying on to kick off from the 20-yard line is where Le Hernandez will go. They have given up a kick return touchdown to Zach Poff earlier. Poff out there on the left this time. Alma indeed not using uh, French go here. Ryan McNiff, Muskegon native, will stand with Poff, but Poff went 90 yards on his last attempt. A report in from my mother that she's tuned in in Peru. Oh, excellent. Love to hear that. Scott's worldwide. Lee Hernandez kicks it in Poff's direction. He'll retreat all the way to the five. That's a big kickoff from the 20 yard line across the 30 for Poff. 35 this time runs out of space there. And brought down. No decent field position for Alma. 
continue to monitor Gage Nelson, who's sitting on the training table being taped up, which is encouraging. That would at least be a sign that he thinks he's going to be able to play on. Like we said, there's still a ton of football left to play here. 35-17 is nothing. Right, for sure. And, and that try and touchdown, I mean, the 25-point lead, Elma could maybe start to feel okay, but now it's right back to 18, and you can't take your foot off the gas against a team with Trine's offensive firepower. Remember, well, like Price, we said, Price yeah. have a seven-touchdown game. Yeah, exactly. Elma from its own 36. Carter St. John, play action over the middle, square in, little route, diving catch by Poff at the 48 of Trine. Into Thunder Territory. Rare catch from Poff that's not a touchdown. Yeah. And Elma ready to go. Ball spotted, ready for play. Coast to Thrash Avulu mixed with the stop. And Williams straight ahead for three. Scott's trying to move quickly. They move Poff over to the other side slot, far side. He's over there with Kruger, second and eight from the Trine 45. Williams again, cut back along the right side in the middle of the field. Squirts <laughs> through, and he may have picked up a first yeah, down. Yeah, he did. Depends on which linesman. The head linesman says yeah, yes. They're, the they're both moving back no. here. The chain gang says yes, but uh, now they're told to stay put. Third and one. Here comes Williams again, I would assume. Nope. Played, pulled back, Nate dropped Webb. off to Webb instead on a little play action and a big gain through the 30 down to the 24 for Webb before he's hogtied up high. And really, up. really nice job out there by Poff and Kruger, though, blocking from the wide receiver position. Alma pushing the tempo. 9.25, they're ready. First down at the 23. St. John, straight drop, all kinds of time. Sits, throws a little wheel route down the sideline, and it's a touchdown Eddie to Williams. Eddie Williams. Eddie Williams is underrated as a receiver. That's his third receiving Eddie touchdown Williams. of the season, and Elma stretches it out to 41-17. 23 yards, and it's another perfect ball from Carter St. John. You cannot throw the ball any better than that. Well, let's also point out that Carter St. John, sacked twice all season, had enough time to sit back there, order some drinks from the concession stand, check the game on TV, and then throw that pass. And he's perfect. I, he is perfect so far. Eight for eight, 182 yards, and a couple scores. Making that 22 Which for 25. Which is for the course Dave, making, for making 22 for 25 feel not so great from last week. We'll see how Elma does on the extra point. Much better protection, and Hernandez drills it. 42 to 17, still nine minutes to play in the second quarter. We we'll got, be hold, hold up. Oh, we no. got a flag on this one. Oh. I think they might have roughed Hernandez at the end okay. of the day. We'll see. Hang on just a second. Yeah, this one's going to count. It's okay. going to be a All rough. Right. Off to commercial. We'll tell you for sure when we come back. My phone is now lighting up with people telling me where they're tuned I in like from. That. We've got we've got Ellie Hall tuned in from a beehive, which sounds like a dangerous spot to watch. Well, but that through. sounds like her. Yes. She's happy there. From the Elma United Way. She'll be proud to know I'm calling this game in my Arts United shirt from 2022. You are, I saw that. It's a warm day well, up here. You full disclosure, I you came in a sweatshirt. You come in a hoodie. <laughs> might You're not right. have been the smartest thing. You're right. That is true. Hernandez has to kick this off into the wind, but because of the unsportsmanlike conduct foul, gets to do so from the 50-yard line. Elma leads 42-17, to 17, still first half, and Hernandez going to take away yeah. any question of a return, flies that one nine yards deep. And the traditional... All the way over the fence. One, one hop over the bicycle racks. There you go. So Trine, who got it done on the previous offensive possession... Brandon Klein with the touchdown reception. They had an early score from Zane Kirby that got them within eight to seven. Remember, Elma got two point conversions on its first two touchdowns. In between, 
Trine scored, forced a punt, drove down the field, but then threw a pick six to Jack Kretschmar, which made the difference. 31 plays, 257 yards for Trine in this first half. 17 for 231 for the Scots, and Elma's dominating the football game. Yeah, sometimes that's the way it goes. Trine from the 25 with whistles everywhere. Too many claps, too many rocks. Let's see, I assume you are correct that Trine moved, but... Snap and fraction. Ah. Oh, that was, that's the politer way of saying false start. Yeah. Uh, everyone except the center. A pump fake snap. Well, I mean, he was, Price was clapping for it, and everybody was kind of rocking back and forth. Trine clearly has decided that they think they can draw Elma offside yes. with that pre-snap. And they have not so far. No, Elma has been very disciplined, has not jumped. So back from the 20, first and 15. Carson Gray out there at a linebacker spot on the left side for Elma. Just three down linemen this time. Gage Nelson is out there for the Scots. Oh, good catch. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, I was going to say, because I hadn't seen that. Lob down the left-hand sideline, and a late jump from Drew Hum saves what could have been a touchdown. Connor Arthur had a step over there on Dykelborer, and Hum comes over and knocks it away. Drew's playing a great game. Gage Nelson is is coaching, following Scotty Cole back and forth, back and forth. Yes. <laughs> Wherever Scotty goes, Gage goes. Normally we see Gage do that later in games oh, yes. when his services are not needed. He's doing it today with his helmet on. Good oh, to he's see ready. up he's and ready. on his feet at least, yes. Second and 15, Scott's with a 25 point lead in the second quarter and maybe thinking that no reason to throw Gage out there if he's anything less than 100%. And off into the middle. Kirby sidestepped to his left. First down yardage upended and thrown backwards there. Not Kirby, pardon me. 26, not 24, that's Nichols. Nichols. Tell you what, Drew Hum's playing a physical ball game. You know, it, it just always catches you off guard because Drew is such an unassuming personality. Yeah. But he plays hard out there. He's a big kid. You know, you don't often see defensive backs at 6'2", 6'3", at least not playing corner. But he does it very, very well. Scots are going to drop the defense here, rush three, unless Jackson comes from a linebacker. Third down and six for trying from their own 28. Price with time again. Sits in the pocket, throws late over the middle, caught by Williams, the running back, hit by Dykelbor. It requires more Scots than that to bring Jermaine Williams down. It's a first down out to the 49. Big credit right there to Price and Williams because that's the play where the Scots get linebacker interceptions all the time when they drop those three linebackers into the zones. Gage Nelson back out there now for the Scots. Price has incredible sense of how much time he, he has. Does. You know, that's an advantage of a five-year starter. He doesn't get the happy feet back there. He knows he's got the protection. Now he runs away when he needs to. Drops it off underneath, caught by Williams again, and falling forward, grabbed by the ankles, or by the jersey, and it is Gage Nelson making that tackle. Elma has put him back out there. A little bit of a hitch oh, yeah. in the giddy up no from doubt. Nelson. Quick gain of nine. There's a distinct possibility that Price throws for 400 yards in this game again. He's already up around 200. If he does, it'll be three of his first five games of the season. Eight minutes to play in the second quarter, 42 to 17 trying. Price throws a late comebacker. Great read there by Klein to adjust to that and make a sliding catch at the 23. Looked like he wasn't even going to get turned around. And the Florida product gets his hands back on it and moves the chains well, again. Nelson didn't get turned around for the Scots that time, which is rare. Well, I'm not sure Gage is at full speed. No, you wonder if he was thinking more about keeping in the proper position, being a little shaken up. First down, trying ball on the far hash mark. Three receivers come to the near side. Klein, then Arthur, then Lawson. Price looks that way, rolling out. Underhill gives chase, complete to Klein at the 18. Beaudry pushed him out of bounds. Scott say this is incomplete. The officials don't seem to agree with no. him there. Bo Beaudry was a vote of one person on that one, apparently. <laughs> Short of a first down by a yard. Klein with another catch. And this trio of trying receivers logging some grabs. Yeah, Price is at 213 yards now on 21 attempts. 12 completions and 10 of those to the three star receivers we told you about all coming in within five yards of 1,400 to start the day. Salim Felder comes on as the running back, second down and one from the 16-yard line. 
Trine has moved the ball very successfully today, and Felder now bursts through a hole. Inside the 10, breaks another tackle, stood up by Fredenberg at the two, kind of popped him up over his shoulder, but this is going to be first and goal. Not a very generous spot. They've got him back at the three. I thought he landed further forward than that myself. Alma will run on Big Evan Mativa down in the middle. They shut down Trine, not quite this close to the goal line, but did force that field goal earlier. Price to Felder, following his offensive line, but the pile stops moving. Elma gets the stop at the two. Makes it second and goal. 42 to 17. It's a shootout. There's no question about that. If Trine comes away with any kind of points here, we'll be over 60 points combined in the second quarter. Scots are, at some point in this game, going to feel very fortunate they scored defensively and on special teams. Remember, Trine only 65% in the red zone this year, and they had not made a field goal until today. Felder stays on at running back. Two receivers to the left, including Clampett. He's kind of the number four guy who comes on in situations. Into the middle, Felder hit and dropped. Bounced yes, into his was. own lineman and went straight Soferdini. backwards, and Soferdini came and had his ankles. It's third and goal. That play didn't go anywhere. Might have lost a half a yard. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just a pinball collision. And Trine's going to open it up now on third and goal, bring Klein and Arthur back on. You've got to keep Price in the pocket here. If he escapes the pocket, I can almost guarantee it'll be a thunder touchdown. From the middle of the field, third down and goal from the two. 42 to 17, Elma, but Trine looking for more. Play action, rolling right, throwing underneath, caught, and a touchdown. Nicely done, dropped off underneath. To Carson, or sorry, to Cam McCarver. Cam Wolves is the defensive number 31. McCarver, a sophomore out of Warren, Indiana. And 42 23. Uh, Nelson hobbles off again. And as hard as it may be for Gage to pull himself out of the action, he may need to wait They're gonna until he can get back to. Go for two here. As it's a 19-point game, try to make it 17. Get to 17, okay. Elma sprints Buddy Hogan back on as the defensive back. And, and now, now a timeout. timeout out Elma, that's that a good timeout. Makes sense with yeah. five minutes to go in the half. You don't need to save that timeout. timeout. Figure out what you're going to do here I don't know. defensively. You, we talk about chasing points a lot. Is trying doing that right here? Or or is this the right call, uh, you know, according to the, the uh, magical according, card? According to the chart, yeah. I, I think that for a team that, that kicks field goals successfully, it probably is. I think it's a close call. Um, I think part of this may just be an acknowledgement by trying to say, we're going to need a heck of a lot yeah, of points yeah. to win this game. We better go find them. That sure. the only way we're coming back is if we get every possible opportunity to go our way. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I agree with that. Scott's getting some of their more prolific defenders Back into that huddle. I saw Eastman come running up. Yep, Eastman will and be he's out there. Be out there, yeah. Soferdini, Dykelbor, Garland, Mativa, plug up the middle. Done. What do you add? The fumble recovery. I think everybody was kind of ready to, you know, kick coverage team and all that, and have to get the personnel back where they need it in a 42-23 game, and still. Tons of time. I was gonna say, I think conditioning is a question. This has been a long half, and yeah. it's hot. It is. You know, you don't think about that on September 30th, but it is a hot day here in Elma. Two point try. Price rolling right, which is where he's been most comfortable all day. Lobs it back of the end zone. Caught by. Oh Klein. no! It's How not. long did he hold it? Did he have it long enough? They say no. Fabulous Punched play. Punched away by Beaudry, who knocked it out of the hands of Brandon Klein, who thought he had held it long enough. They say no good. 19 remains the lead for Elmo. We'll be back in a minute.
been a bananas afternoon here at Elma College. Elma up most of the way. I guess the whole way, technically, thanks to that two-point conversion early. But now 42 to 23 after trying scores again. Brandon Klein unable to convert the two-point conversion. Now a kickoff return from Poff from the three. Stutter step at the 15, surges at the 25. Now into traffic at the 30, heads to his left. 35, one man to beat there. Now cuts inside at midfield. Cuts through some defenders and finally brought down in trying territory at the 46. I do not see any flags behind it. Now another fabulous return from Zach Poff. Good field position, very important possession for this Elma offense, leading by 19. If trying could get a quick three and out, or any stop, go down and score, they would then get the ball to start the second half. I don't know if it was somebody on the coaching staff or in the trying stands ranting about that basically uh, while we were in commercial, uh, but uh, they were letting everyone that could hear know that that was the possibility. <laughs> so French, big possession here French for the Scots. joins McNiff and Kruger to the left on first down. The freshman Jordan Williams from Clarenceville hauled down behind the line go. of scrimmage. A nice tackle behind the line there by Matthew Jimenez. I thought that was going to be one where he rolled over the top of him and started running again. Ah, But you're right. It, it's odd that Elma could find itself in a situation where you've scored 42 points in the first yeah. half. you got a 19-point lead, and you feel like you better score you here or to. you're in a tight spot. But that is the way this game has gone. Short motion from Thomas to the top side of the field, second and 11. They'll try Jordan Williams again. He gets back what he lost, plus one to the 44, but here comes third and nine. Pretty conservative right there, a couple bit, plays. A little bit. Elma talks so much about wanting to get what they call the first first down. In other words, not go three and out, pick up at least one first down. What, what's their metric for that, 80% of the yeah, time? Something Some, of something that Something in that number. It looks like they're trying to chew a little clock here, though. Third down and nine, they have taken the tempo off. St. John flushed out of the pocket on the run. Slices inside, now cuts at the 40, hit there. Dives forward, and he's about two yards short. And Elma's going to have go a chance to go for this. They send the, oh, they no, send this the is, Dahmer package out. This yep. is too far for that. Fourth down and three, and they'll bring on Rife in the short yardage package. Now remember, he had a day at Trine last year. He did. Leading both ends of a 99-yard drive as oh. Elma really stuffed the... Stuffed the exclamation point on that first too half. Too far for this. They burst out. Fourth down and two. Rife going to try to keep it himself. It Hit behind the line of scrimmage and far. dropped. So Elma maybe gets a little too creative there, and they turn it over on downs. Tucker Hasselman comes away with the football. Doesn't matter. It's trying ball anyway. Normally, Elma does that in a couple of situations. Fourth down and one, or like first and goal at the two, where right. you've got two or three plays to get yeah. you a couple of yards. But in that situation... That's yeah. very similar field position to uh, when they tried to do it against Aurora in a big situation and got stuffed. So now Elma has to call on the defense. So strange to say that in a game where they've put 42 points on the board in the first half, but with 338 still to go, a try and touchdown totally changes the complexion of this game. As Jeff just told you, Elma kicks off to start the second half. It'll be trying football. They have moved it. Generally with ease, just gave Elma a pick six out of one possession. And a fumble out of another. Trine has not punted. Price drops. Pocket holds once again. Throwing long down the far sideline. Just a bit too far for Lawson. Heck of an effort by Lawson. He's going to need a play, I think. Yep, yep, and he knows it. Hell actually needs a shoulder, play, shoulder pad repair. Drew Hum was... Essentially stride for stride, but that in a position where Lawson could have tried to Superman it, but just a click Oh, he too tried far. to Superman it, yes. that's for sure. Just a little too far. That was an impressive effort. Kirby, the running back, Elma held him under 30 yards last year into a long carry of just six. He had a 15 yard touchdown early in the game. Second down. Four trying, thrown out to the left side, too high. A little bit of a misfire there. Part of that is that Arthur stumbled on his break to the outside with Jared in coverage. But now third and 10, a rare spot for trying, who, as we've already told you a couple of times, has converted 60% of its third downs this season. It would be huge if the Scots could get off the field here, get the ball back with about three minutes remaining in this half. Go down and try to put some points on the board. It's like we said, it is not a comfortable lead right now. No, no. Just under three and a half to play till halftime. 
Klein, Clampett, and Arthur all to the right. Lawson over to the left on third and 10. Elma has not been able to get the pass rush through to Alex Price today. One deep safety for Elma. Here comes the pass rush. Price in a lot of trouble. Jarrett giving chase. Throws caught underneath. Williams comes back to make that grab. Now bursts through a couple of tackles along the far sideline. Gets Short pushed of the out of down. bounds just shy at about the 45. If I'm trying, I go for this. Elma shifting personnel expecting a punt, but I'm not sure that's what they're going to no, see. No, I don't think they're expecting a punt. They're going yeah. to their jumbo defense. Yeah, you're right. There's no, there's no punt returner back there and no sign of a punter from Trine either. 3.09, play clock running. Trine comes to the line and sets up. Two to each side. Alex Price going to try to pick it up on fourth down. Trying just one of three on fourth downs this year. Play action. Price rolls right. Caught into Elma territory. First down, Brandon Klein. Scots are struggling mightily against that roll to the right. Ish Abdul Aziz makes the tackle. But a first down into Elma territory. Still 257 left in the half. Elma trying to figure out its personnel. Dykelbor is still not sure whether he's supposed to go on. Eventually the decision is no. He'll go with Preston Marlat instead. Of course, he had himself a game down at Manchester, a couple of touchdowns. He will have the primary coverage out on the right side against Clampett. Meanwhile, they'll give Klein a 15-yard cushion. First down, trying run into the middle with Williams. Hit there by Eastman along with Jackson and driven backwards after only a short gain of maybe a yard and a half. Williams picks up about two yards. Two fifteen clock running. Trying still with a full complement of timeouts. Time not an issue right now for the Thunder. They would love to take this down to nothing and score because, like we said, they would then get the ball. Yeah. And they've made it far enough up the field that Elma isn't going to try to preserve nope. clock. Too risky at this stage of the game. Second down and nine. Price retreats to his 46, lobbing it down the sidelines, and Arthur broke off the route. It's too far out of bounds anyway. Nope, wasn't going to be caught, but they roughed him. Is there a flag down? I yep. don't see it. Where is it? It's right oh, there it is. It's in the shadow. It's in the shadow of big number 71 out there. So Hunter Sanderson, 93, not 83, called for the roughing penalty. And those were the mistakes that caused Elma trouble That's last week. a huge week. one right there. Both teams have contributed first downs by penalty to their opposition. Minute and 47 left in the half. First down trying at the 32 after the penalty gets marched off. The ball to the 32 yard line it's first down. Trying will take its time with the clock stop, catch their breath a little bit. Williams is the back, nobody to the right side of the field. Everything overloaded to the left. Price looking left, now back over the middle. Sidearm caught by Lawson. Jackson comes back, makes the tackle at the 15. Price does a nice job of kind of lowering that arm angle when there's no hands in his face and delivering a line drive that gets there in a hurry. Yeah. First down at the 16, 42-23 Elma, trying, trying to get to 30 in the first half and make things very, very interesting. Clock now running, trying taking its time here. Having made it to the 16 yard line, time less of an issue. First down, Price on about the third clap. Into the middle with Williams, hitting the backfield. I don't think he's gonna get away this time. And we'll see if Trine wants to stop it now after losing a yard. Clock's gonna run under a minute. Play in there by the freshman, Carson Gray. Sanderson comes back on, Dunwoody off. Gray forced into action with the Nelson injury. Trying, allowing a lot of time to run here. They down are. to 45 they do, seconds. They will not let the Scots get the ball back. Second down and 11. Craig Nichols, you're running back this time for the Thunder. Price snaps it with 35, fakes it to Nichols, throws into the slot, too high for Lawson and off his fingertips. Falls harmlessly into the end zone. Third down. Well, he'll say he should have caught that one, Will Lawson. It was up top, and he got hit right as it arrived. Yeah. It would have been a tough catch. He'll still tell you he should have caught Probably it. Probably so. I can almost guarantee that Probably one. Probably so. 
third and 11. The first down marker is just short of the five yard line. They gonna burn one here? I think maybe, they've run it down. The clock, sorry, the clock stopped on the incompletion at 30 seconds. The play clock also isn't running, so. Yeah, well, nothing much is running at the moment, so. So yeah. I guess they're not gonna have to burn a timeout. Play clock now back up to 25. Now they'll signal it ready for play. And, and, it, and now, now the timeout calls from time the side. Out. <laughs> I think everybody knew there was going to be a timeout called, but nobody called it. Or I don't, Who knows? But uh, regardless, there's 30.4 seconds to go in the first half. And the ball rests at the 12-yard line, third and 10. If you're trying, you've got to be thinking ahead a little bit in terms of what would happen on a fourth down here. It's a long field goal, but it's downwind, and it would make it a two-score game at 16 points. I, I think you have to try it. Yeah. I mean. It's just awfully difficult when your team is one of six kicking field goals uh -huh. on the year, and you aren't sure you've found your kicker. They it's had also a 30-yard field goal, and it's college football. You've got to be able to. Yeah. You got to be able to at least attempt that and feel pretty good about it. I guess it's a little longer than that. The ball is actually at the 17, not the 12. I yeah. am yeah, looking about, incorrectly out about there. About 34 so. or 35 at the yeah. moment, depending upon what happens on this fourth Everything's down. a little bit further than what my analysis just said. 42 to 23, 30 seconds left in the first half. Elma with a 19-point lead in a lengthy but thrilling first half here on homecoming. Alex Price drying his hands off on the towel behind his back. Pretty good chance this ball's going in the air. Oh, yeah. Which you would have assumed anyway on third down and 11. Klein and Arthur to the right. Lawson left. Little play, play action. A retreating throw looking for Lawson who dives under it in the corner of the end zone. A flag down. Garland wants offensive interference, but I think this is going to be a try and touchdown. That was a an nice throw. throw under heavy pressure. Garland claims he got pushed as Lawson cut to the outside, but I think the call will be that Garland held on as that happened, but let's find out. Before the pass holding. Uh, earlier in the play, yep. so irrelevant. Declined, 42-29. Exactly 25. what the doctor ordered right there for trying. 25 seconds left in the half. Well, they gotta find a way to stop Poff on the return. Right, possibly not kicking to him would be a good idea. High snap, Gillette pulls it down, gets it on the ground for Hentz, who boots it through. 42 to 30, if you had 72 first half points on your bingo card, get up and collect your prize. 25 seconds left in the half, we'll be back. Thirteen straight from trying totally changed the complexion of this game as we prepare to head into halftime. Twenty-five seconds left, though, which, based on current rate of scoring, could be time for a couple more scores. We'll see how aggressive Elma wants to get. Big question for the second half, of course, the status of Gage Nelson. Got injured on the Brandon Klein touchdown, returned briefly, but did not appear to be full speed and was not out there for most of that trying touchdown drive. Lay Hernandez to kick it away. And they're going to dare Poff to beat him, and he will get a chance from the one. He's been dangerous today, already took one back 90 yards, but has to make a move at the 15-yard line, a flag down behind this one. And Elma now probably in a position that it's going to be time for a kneel down yeah. because yeah, they're going to start so. at about the 8-yard line. I don't think head coach Jason Couch is going to be very happy in that halftime locker room. Not anymore. If he could have gone to halftime early in the second quarter, maybe, but not now. Scots are not playing very well defensively, not getting home. Yeah, well, and, you know, it circles back to what you said, which, I mean, I kind of raised my eyebrows at the time when you said Trine's playing pretty well. They'd had two bad mm -hmm. defensive breakdowns, one that led to a touchdown and one that led to a touchdown two plays later, and a couple of turnovers and a special teams error. But other than that, they were moving the ball. 
and Elma has not been able to stop them. Remember, Elma has not forced to try and punt all day. Watch French Co. Elma from the nine yard line, not showing anything resembling a victory They're gonna formation double him, here. I think, but watch French Co. Yeah, French Co drawing plenty of attention from the trying defense. St. John will just try Eddie Williams, see if there's any space available. And a oh. nice open field tackle made by Vinnie Ambrose. They were a step away from maybe having some trouble there. And Elma now will look to the scoreboard and say, that's enough. Yes. Off to the halftime locker room. Homecoming festivities coming up here from Balky Field. We'll have as much of that as we can pick up on our cameras and microphones and then take a break, come back with a Pizza One halftime report live from Elma College. It is a game here, folks. Elma puts up 42 in the first half, but they lead only by 12. Trying surges late in the second quarter, 42 to 30 at the break. Back here at Elma College as the Kilty Marching Band gets set up. Hope you like offense as we welcome you into the first part of the Pizza One Halftime Report. 42 to 30, Elma's halftime lead. The teams combined for over 630 yards of offense. Trine runs 50 offensive plays with 21 minutes of time of possession, posts 385 yards. Elma runs only 23 plays, 238 yards. Uh, but leads the game with 42 points on the board, thanks primarily to a Jack Kretschmar interception return touchdown 
along with a Zach Poff 90-yard kickoff return and a couple of lengthy Devin Frenchco touchdown receptions, one where he was left completely uncovered and another one where the Scots got a three-on-two matchup out to the right. But after leading this game 42 to 17, Elma gives up two scores and they've had a couple of key losses defensively. Jack Kretschmar's day over after a targeting call on an over the middle catch by Trine and then Gage Nelson banged up on Brandon Klein's touchdown reception. Uh, left the game, got some work done on the sidelines, returned, uh, but appeared to be hobbling a little bit and then took himself back out of the game. Uh, so Elma could be without a couple of its key defensive leaders in the second half. Uh, and as we said, trying gouging them. This is an Elma team defensively that traditionally on the season allowing under 300 yards a game, uh, only a 256 clip for the opponents through the first two weeks, including under 60 yards a game on the ground. Instead, Trine comes out here today and puts up almost 400 yards in the first half. Kilty Marching Band now is ready to go, so we will turn them up for you here on the broadcast. Join in with Dave Zerby's group as they entertain you for halftime.
An expanded halftime show from the Kilty Marching Band as Killer as Pinball Wizard gets added to the Who-themed performance. An amazing job by that group once again to the delight of the homecoming fans. Welcome back to the Pizza One halftime show where Elma leads Trine at the half 42 to 30. And if you could ever have a 42-point first half and a 12-point lead that didn't feel like it, 
that's what you're looking at right here. A turn of events in that second quarter. Elmo leading the game 42 to 17. Jack Kretschmar picks up a targeting penalty, gets sent away. Brandon Klein scores a touchdown. Gage Nelson gets hurt on that play. Elma then gets the ball back, drives, faces a fourth down in trying territory, and with two to go, sends out their short yardage package and gets only about a half a yard. They turn it over on downs. Trine comes back, gets a first down by penalty again, and then kicks it in for, an end, for, for a touchdown in the corner of the end zone late. Gets within 12 and will receive the second half kickoff. So the Scots have got some work to do despite scoring on defense, scoring on special teams, a quarterback that's eight for eight. A lot of things look great, including a 12-point lead, uh, but there's a long ways to go. The, the first possession for each team in this half is immense. Uh, I don't think you can... I don't think you can state enough how much, uh, how, how important it is for both offenses on their first possession. If Trine puts up points and then gets a stop, they're gonna feel like they can win the game with ease. Uh, if the Scots get a stop and then put points on the board, they're gonna feel a whole lot better about their chances as well. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, that being said, as we've mentioned multiple times now, Trine has not had to punt. Trine no. has only stopped themselves with three turnovers. Try and also remember, is it's weird because some of these plays kind of get lost, A, just in the circus of everything that happened, but also in that period of time that it looked like Elma was getting away. Remember, try and fumble the kickoff. Elma got it back, but the play was negated by an inadvertent right. whistle. Trine, I believe, turned that into a touchdown they on did. that ensuing possession. Had they not done that, that's Elma with another short field and a potential opportunity to put this game away. So those plays that kind of get lost early on in the action when the game didn't feel close suddenly rise in importance as Trine has found its way back into this. And I tell you what, you have to give Trine an immense amount of bounce back credit. Just the, the toughness, the mental strength from this team. Elma came out and scored in a minute and 16 seconds and they could have scored faster but for a ball being underthrown that would have sure. been a touchdown when Nate Webb was left completely uncovered. Trine came back, did not blink, went right down the field and scored. Then they throw the pick six. Elma gets it out to a three score lead and Trine doesn't stop again. It got it to a four score lead. It was 25 right. points. Yeah. And, and Trine has found its way back into this. Um, I talked a little bit about the team stats while you were gone during halftime. Then you came back and looked and said, whoa, Trine ran 50 plays. Yes, they did. 50 plays, 385 yards, and 21 minutes of time of possession. Now, Elma isn't a time of possession team in the first place with their tempo. Um, but I think even they would like to have the offense out there a little bit more uh, than just Trine wearing out their defense, especially as the defensive ranks get thinned well, a little bit. Yeah, it, it, Trine has two stops defensively, one on downs and, and one on the... Uh, one that led to a punt. The one that led to a punt, exactly. Scots have two stops on defense as well, both on by way of interception. So the and, defense, a, and a fumble recovery. And a fumble recovery, sure. So, uh, you know, both teams need to prove that they can stop the other one without, you know, something happening. Scott's more so than the Thunder. The right. Thunder have done it uh, regular means a couple times, whereas Elma has not. And I think that's got to be a concern in the locker room at halftime. If you're head coach Jason Couch, and uh, along with Ryan Ettinger, Scotty Cole, you got to make those adjustments, use the personnel you've got available, and just figure out where you can stop these guys. Yeah, that's a good point, that, that even with the lopsided nature of total yards, 385 to 243 to try and yards per play, it's 11 yards per play for Elma, yeah. a little under eight yards uh, per clip or per snap for Trine. Obviously, both of those Gaudy, are plenty to, plenty to get you up and down the field and move the sticks, uh, but somebody's got to figure out a way uh, to put the brakes on here. Elma obviously winning that turnover battle, but it's just, you know, what, what I think makes it feel dicey for Elma is that you look at this and you say, Everything went right, right, in terms of those metrics, turnover-wise, and, and things of that nature. And we're only up by 12, um, and we've given up 30 points in the first half, which is something that our defense just That's doesn't the do. Concern. The, the only, really, the only team that has done that to this iteration of the Scots defense is the Aurora team. That you know, they right. looked like a D2 school or maybe an NFL team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, c coming out of the Aurora area, they might be one of the better NFL teams and. Northern Illinois. They, they would be the best one in Northern year. Illinois. There's no question. Sorry to but, the Bears uh, fans out there, but interesting know. situation though here. Uh, you know the Scots have really 
now two halves in a row not played well defensively. The second half mm -hmm. against, against Wittenberg, Wittenberg and now here in this first half against Trine. And they've given up a boatload of points, uh, over 50 points in, in you know, basically a full game's worth, the two halves. And, you know, the vast majority of it's been through the air. Well, you know, and, and one of the concerns that we had, we talked about this in the pregame, is that mentally Elm is in a position that's different. They, they are, you know, the, the theme may be hunt, but they are the hunted they this are. year is the truth. And, and they know that. And there was some concern, you know, would they overlook trying as a 2-2 two two team? The first 20 minutes of this game confirmed no. But did they start to overlook trying when they had a 25-point lead? And that's what they've got to refocus you and wonder. recognize that this game was not over then, and it is definitely not over now. They certainly know that by now. But do they have the ability to sort of reassert themselves into the upper hand position that they had for much of that first half? But it's not all doom and gloom because they still do have a two-score lead in this football that's game. That's true. While it does not feel like it, it does not seem like right. it, they have done all the things right to establish themselves a two-score lead. Right. Right. The, on the other hand, a two-score lead for them, because of the tempo, right? They it's don't. Not as they, much. they don't have the ability to just go on an eight-minute drive without running something completely different right. than their normal. Yeah, tendencies. you don't want to get uncomfortable. Yeah, and and I asked you that during halftime. You know, the, the defense has got to be tired. Is there any chance that they come out of the tempo? I immediately to, said, and, no. and yeah, exactly. You vetoed that without an inch of thought, um, and I think that that you're right because that's mainly a way to outthink yourself, the same right. type of thing that maybe they did a little bit on that fourth down yep. play. It'd be one thing if that short yardage package had been out in the game, but that was their first appearance it in was. the game. Remember the other interesting thing in the first half is what happened on Elma's extra points. There's another yeah. thing that's lost in the, in the shuffle. Elma gets two-point conversions from its swinging gate alignment on its first two, appears to get one on the third, but that's nullified by penalty. They kick that extra point, but then the next two get blocked. So there's sort of been pros and cons in that part of the game for Elma, and that's why the lead is 12. Street, who had the nullified fumble on the kickoff return, returns. He is the primary return man, Rayshon Street, out of Indianapolis, 21-and-a-half-yard average with a long of 40, 5'9", sophomore. Also had a 52-yard receiving touchdown in Trine's two-point loss to Rose Holman. He is back on the right side of the return formation, which is where Hernandez traditionally kicks it. Hernandez has got a little bit of a tailwind behind him. 30 minutes here on homecoming. Elma's lead down to 12. What will they have as they come out of the halftime locker room? <laughs> Hernandez ready to go and somebody not ready to go. Waiting for an all clear. Perhaps waiting they just for can't the song. Hear the whistle. Yeah, waiting for the song to end. And here we go, that slow walk into a quicker approach, high kick but short, and Street will take it from the five. Blockers in front, straight up the numbers to the 27 and tripped up. And that's where Trine will get things started. Drew Holm down there on the coverage along with Buddy Hogan. Deshaun Street with return, Drew Holm brings him down. So Alex Price comes back out after a prolific passing first half. In keeping with what he has done all season long, 17 for 28, 262 yards. What are you pointing at? Gage there, Nelson so? just emerged from the locker room, just now running up the sidelines and getting into position with his helmet on as though he wants to be out there. Very late coming out of the locker room, obviously. M must have been getting as much treatment as he possibly could after hobbling off the field following the Klein touchdown. Trying to start the second half. They trail by 12. Price, the five-year starter in the shotgun as we get things underway. Handoff going right as Trine continues its cycle of running backs going back to Crawford, and he's pulled down for a substantial loss on the right side. That was Jackson over there with help from Gray. This is such a different approach for Trine in the rushing attack who have leaned heavily on just Kirby and Williams through the first four weeks. Today it has been a complete committee job Six carries from Williams and Kirby, the most for anyone in that first half. Second down and 14 after Elma gets that initial stop. Scott's come out in a three-down lineman formation. And Price wants to throw again with lots of time over the middle. 
And Klein wide open, retreats after making the catch at about the 35, and he's going to be close to the first Got down. It. Went back to about the 32, then headed up the sideline to the 37 and should have moved the chains. Went back a long way, but again, found space there. The biggest part of this is what Trine's offensive line has done. Gage Nelson in full out on coaching the field. mode. He was out on the field calling out signals. Cooper O'Gara trying to pump up the defensive players that are on the sidelines. First down, Trine. 13.50 to play in the second half, or in the third quarter, as we get the second half underway. Three wide receivers come left for this first down attempt. Kirby back in there at running back. Price looking left, looking left some more. Now running, trying to get away from Robertson. Tries to throw it away. It's a wobbler out of bounds, almost caught by Lawson, who tumbles into the Scots. Uh, many people taken out over there. It's all one big incompletion. The Elma Reserves has the football, waiting for someone to take it from him. Well, they're trying to get Lawson his towel back first. He'll tuck that into the back of his shorts. And after all of that, second and ten. Trying with a little over 100 rushing yards in the first half. Most of the 385 yards coming through the air. Lawson confused as to where to line up. Arthur doesn't know the play call either. They've got lots of time if they need to get set. Still 16 on the play clock. Michael Borer shows blitz from his corner spot, now gets back into a traditional cover spot. Kirby with the carry, finds space up the middle, hit about three yards downfield, spins out of that first down yardage, crosses midfield to the Elma 49. Yeah, the reason he was able to spin out of it is Sanderson had him by the face mask and had to let go. They're going to tack 15 onto the end of this one. Flag back at the 40 in the Elma. Oh. What? I mean, Tryon has their hands up like they can't believe it, but it's definitely a face mask. Yeah. Yep. Maybe they just looked down at the flag and were Could be confused. a 15-yard penalty. We've talked about that already. Elma's penalty struggles. They had six penalties for 80 yards in the first half. Now 95, already averaging just 97 pen penalty yards a game. We also mentioned, you know, Trine struggling with the penalties. Seven penalties for 70 yards in the first half for the Thunder as well. Both these teams just unable to keep the officials out of their business. Trying all the way to Elma's 35. Trying to make this a one-score game. 42-30 to 30 early third quarter. Trying has marched up and down the field against the Elma defense. Delayed handoff. Kirby hole up the middle. Tripped up in there by Soffordini, who just got a piece of the ankles. It's a five-yard gain to the 30. Trying's getting really good run support here. Quickly trying to the line, ready to go. Right side run this time with Nichols, I think. Only a couple yard gain down to the 28. It'll be third down. Trying up to almost 140 yards rushing now. You mentioned in the first half, Jackson shouldering so much oh, of the yeah. tackling load, and you weren't kidding. 12 tackles already for Eli Jackson. Next closest Scott is Fredenberg with six. Third down and three here for Trine. Not likely field goal range, so Elma needs two stops. Double H back alignment this time, just two wide receivers. Third and short, they'll run with Nichols. No, they pull it back. Price rolling to his right, drops it off underneath. He does that very, very well yep. on a first down completion down to the 19-yard line. Yep, Scots have got to get those tight ends covered. That's four or five times now that they've picked up first downs off of that. Yep. Cam McCarver on the check down. Does it again, his second grab, at least, maybe third. Spot moved back to the 21, but still enough for a first down. 11.56 to go in the third. Ball on the right hash, two receivers left. Handoff sweeping right to Nichols, waiting for the hole open. It does, goes across the 20 to the 15, now along the sideline, pushed out of bounds, bodies tumbling everywhere. About He's not gonna yard. get a very good mark on this one. Yeah, looks like they're going to mark him at the 15. That's still a five-yard gain, though. Yeah. And Elma's going to try wholesale changes. They've got just enough time, although Trine now says, let's go. These guys aren't ready. Nichols again flying through, flag down. Not sure if Trine got set. Play you goes for a wonder, loss of a yard. And Elma may want to think about declining that penalty. Wait, wait, wait and see. Maybe the Scots were in the neutral zone oh, trying to get everybody on. That's also possible. I didn't think of that. Candela made the stop for a loss, but let's find out if the play is going to count. Institution infraction looks like. 
Now they're still talking about it. Okay, it's a, it's a trying penalty because they're looking to the Scots sideline and they're going to decline whatever it is. So the Scots will make it third down, take the loss. Be third and about seven. Remember, it's a 12-point game, which frankly is another reason that Trine might not look to the field goal unit. Getting from 12 to nine doesn't do a lot for you. Let's call it third and six. Will it be another Trine third down conversion where they are so deadly? Price dries the hands on the towel behind his back. Takes his time. First clap, not a snap. Second one is handoff into the middle. And Doesn't nothing, have it this time. nothing much there for Felder. But that's the surefire sign that it's four down territory when you run there. Yeah, if you're running on third and six, you're not planning on kicking anything. Both teams going to sub here. Fourth down and four. Elmo with a chance to get off the field and turn the tide here in a game that they lead by 12 but have been on their heels for a about 10 minutes of game time. Biggest play of the ball game so far right here. Five wide for the Thunder on fourth down and four. The Scots are gonna burn one. Interesting. It's a game where they may want those timeouts at the end, but they also do not want a try and conversion here, and they're gonna try to decipher what that formation meant. Well, if I'm trying, I come out in a different one, though. I would assume that they will not see it. I think you're probably exactly right. And sometimes that's the point of the timeout, sure. is to say, hey, we'd like you to run something else, yeah. so we're yeah, going to act sure. like we know how to deal with this. 42-30. Trying one fourth down conversion in that first half. One for one. Elmo was 0 for 1. Ball is on the 15-yard line. The marker is at the 11. Trine has been a little more conservative, a bit more on the ground on this drive. They have been, very much so. But I gotta believe that this stays in Price's hands here. Like He's cannot let him roll to the right here. That's the one thing, Trine has tried to roll him right. That's a shorter field, it so is. a little less space to maneuver. He's gonna have to dump it off quickly if he wants to go that way. 10.34 to play in the third quarter. Early score from Adrian and Hope. Adrian on top of Hope at the end of the first quarter. Albion was thumping Kalamazoo at the last update. All right, here we go. And Olivetta winner in MIAA play earlier this afternoon. Fourth down and four for Trine. Elma leads this game 42 to 30, but Trine at the Elma 15 yard line. They stay five wide. The receiver's in a slightly different configuration. A tap of the chest with a left hand from Alex Price, which surely means something, drying those hands off again. Loss in the widest of the three receivers to the left. They look right, he just stands in there throwing for the end zone up high, and it's intercepted by Drew Hum. Oh, what a catch by Drew Hum. Oh my Lord. Hum cuts in front of Klein and takes it away. Incredible athleticism from Hum, and that's what you get from your 6-2 corner. He went up, high pointed that football like he was a receiver, and came down with it in the back of the end zone for the Scots' biggest play of the afternoon. Second week in a row with a hum interception and the eighth of his career, and that one is very, very important. I mean, from here, that was a super impressive defensive play. Well covered all the way. Sometimes sometimes the plays that look most impressive is when the DB right. is out of position and gets back into position, but he was there the whole time. He was. Out comes the Elma offense. They're going to have to play through the 50-50 announcement as they're ready to go. Eddie Williams, first down carry, bounces off his own lineman. Good for two, maybe two and a half up the middle. Scots have been very conservative on the ground. Again, only eight passing attempts for St. John. Six carries, 22 yards, and not, not tremendously successful on the ground either. No. 24 for Williams, 13 for Carter St. John. In no that deep first safety half. here. St. John going to run with it. Flushed out of the pocket, but space in the middle of the field. Cuts to his right. Tripped up at the 30. Just an ankle tackle, but falls forward for the first down near the 35. And look at the Scots assemble. They are ready. Yes. The ball is, they don't even know where the ball is going to no. go. Just say it'll be about here. Ready to go. Snap. First down. Play action. St. John double clutch. Throws long. A lot of traffic out there. Trying to adjust to it. Kruger, and he makes a leaping grab at the 25. Oh, boy. What a catch by Gage Kruger. I thought the ball was for Poff. 
but Kruger camped under it, went up and got it. Kruger could not have made that catch in the first half because that would have been directly right. into the sun. It has moved just far enough to the west that when Gage looks back, he's got a clear look at the ball to adjust to that. Scott say hold up, get those chains set. They're going to get a play call in from the sideline here. First down, Elma at the Trine 24. They lead 42-30, to 30, trying to assert themselves in the second half after forcing their fourth turnover of the day. Poff to the right, looking that direction. St. John, Poff cuts inside on a post, double grabs it and pulls it in at the seven. He had it, he lost it, he had it again. Coverage was great from the Thunder. Just a better throw by St. John, who's now 10 for 10. That's Van Hooser, the number two tackler on this Trine unit, who almost knocked it away. Elma will again pause briefly to get the play call. St. John continues to rack up completions. I think the Scots are trying to get their defense a blow. I, this is what I wondered. You know, as much as you want points, the defense does need a second or two. Eddie Williams continues on as the running back. The, the veteran, as a sophomore, gets it here, steps to his left, moves forward. Oh! his shoulder and scores! Look out at the one-yard line! Oh, my! That was a violent touchdown from Eddie Williams. They played pinball wizard at halftime, and the pinball won that one. Oh, my, it's an Elma touchdown. Everybody in the stadium saw that oh one, too. Oh, dear. Incredible run from Eddie Williams, and that is exactly how the Scots wanted those first two possessions to go. 48-30 to 30 as Hernandez comes on for the PAT. Remember, Trine has blocked two today. They're trying to time it again. Snap a little late, but no problem. Hernandez knocks it through to the children out on the track. 49 to 30, back to a 19 point lead will return. Elma marches right down the field and then dials up Eddie Williams for his second rushing touchdown of the game, or sorry, of the year, second touchdown of the game, had a receiving touchdown earlier, and Hernandez drives the kickoff a couple yards deep, trying to the 25-yard line. Oh, my, a 40-yard throw on a flag that flew from the 40-yard line inside the 40 to the far There's 29, and now another one. So let's see what we've got here. Try and I'll be honest, I wasn't watching, so... Normally on a touchback, you just don't see much going on. I think one is a sideline warning on Trine. Okay. I'm so guessing. the other one's probably a personal foul on the Scots, you would imagine. Guessing on that, but we'll see. Lengthy count going from the band to count off those 49 points that Elma has For scored so far. Here, St. John, 10 of 10, 264, and three touchdowns. We'll get the call here. Officials needing a little bit of time to sort this out, which would suggest there are two fouls. There is no foul on the play for the back. Or none. <laughs> no fouls. Okay. The other guy just apparently wanted to set his flag down. Don't worry about it. You don't often see things get waved off when there are two flags thrown. Right, especially not when they're thrown about 10 seconds apart. Yeah. But, okay. Try and back out there. They continue to march up and down the field, but they've turned it over four times. Three Alex Price interceptions, now nine on the year. Elma adds to its gaudy turnover numbers, now plus 16 in turnover margin. And 13 of those by way of the interception. Price and the gun behind this experience trying line that has been phenomenal today. Hand off to Kirby, slicing to his right, turns it up to the 20, or sorry, to the 28. 
three yard pickup there. Beaudry laid a hat in there to finish him off. Kirby was the leading rusher for trying two seasons ago, injured last year, but rushed for 822 yards last season. We mentioned now 26 career touchdowns, well over 2,000 career yards. Second down and seven, 49 to 30. Elma on top of trying. Price from the pocket. Wobbler up the field, overthrown. Oh, and a big hit after the fact, and the flag flies on Fredenberg. That That's cannot tough. possibly be targeting. I don't think so. It could be a personal foul. It was clearly a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hit, a very hard hit taken by Connor Arthur. I don't like the call at all. The, the ball had gone past, and that's where I think you could argue that it's late, but... I don't know that you can pull up from that, that's though. That's pretty tough. It's one of the things that, that, is the, that is the price of throwing a really aggressive hit. Yeah. That sometimes when it looks bad, the flag, throw, flag flies. Ball was clearly going to be incomplete, uncatchable but not one that you knew was uncatchable until it got there. They're going to say the play was over. Yeah. That's, right. that's a tough call. Right. I mean, that, that's what I said is the only way uh, they could justify it, but it's not a targeting call. No, it costs no. Alma 15, but it doesn't cost that them Fredenberg. I fairly strongly disagree with that one. That was a, that was a tough one. You know, my, my gauge is always, that's do a, I look for the flag? Right, that's a bang-bang play. Yeah. And I did look for it. I, didn't, I wouldn't have thrown it either, but I understand. First down, Trine, out to the 43. They play Adrian next week for the Border Brawl Trophy, a 1 o'clock kickoff. Elma off next week, then they head to Hope on the 14th, the 2 o'clock kickoff against the Dutch. Hope led Elma in the second half here last year behind backup quarterback Chance Strickland, who they've moved to running back this season. So that'll be a great matchup. But a long ways to go here, 49 to 30. Scotts Kirby following his blockers, surges forward and picks up seven or eight more. Crosses midfield. Midway through the third quarter here. Second and two coming up. For Trine, whose opening drive of the half went the length of the field and then ended in a fourth down interception by Elma fifth year senior Drew Hum. 3 4 alignment defensively for Elma, handoff into the middle. And working right for a gain of about five. Felder comes back in. He's had a nice day off the bench. Sure that the heat not bothering him at all as a Florida native. Lindback is down out there. Cramping in the heat. Well, you know, I wondered when, when we would see this hit somebody for the first time. It is warm out here today. You know, generally later in the season, you're a little bit more into playing shape mm -hmm. and so forth. But also later in the season, it's normally cold. No, it's hot right now. It is not cold today by any stretch of and the imagination. During this break, Jason Couch really wants an explanation on that Fredenberg personal foul. He's unhappy to say the least. I think at the same time, this stoppage, even though... It's it great for the Scots, Exactly. It, it gives Elma a de facto timeout to rest the defenders. And up on his feet is Lindback. He's been great run blocking today, along with uh, Garrison Hickel. Hickel's been really good. Lindback, a first team All MIAA selection last year. Four All Conference returners for Trine this season. Troy Abs in his ninth season, 57 and 25. Started as the defensive coordinator in Trine back in 2006 after a nine year high school coaching career. Played baseball and football at Hanover, the team that beat Trine last week. His team looks at first down at the Elma 43. 7.41 to go in the third quarter. Elma with 49 on the board already, but Trine with 30. And on the move once again, courtesy of a couple Elma penalties. Motion out of the backfield from Jermaine Williams becomes a third wide receiver. Price stands in, tipped up in the air, almost caught it anyway. And good job by Elma to recognize that once that was a tipped pass, everybody's fair game. Yeah, that was go Kugelman. After yeah, Ben Kugelman, a 5'9", 200-pound linebacker, makes that hit, and it's incomplete. Interesting. Elma almost subbed Mativa in here, and I think then realized, wait a minute, it's second, second and 10. And long, more, yeah. more likely to be a passing down. Probably don't need your run stopper. Yeah, they'll keep Carson Gray out there instead. Gray's played well since coming on for Nelson. Nelson's still not in there. 
after getting hurt late in the first half. Three down lineman once again, play action. Price rolls right, throws on the run, a little comeback route caught at the 29, and it's another trying they first down. Gave up that roll to the right again. This one to Odin, Owen Hebbard out of Metamora, Michigan, a Lapeer High School grad finding his way down to Angola, sophomore. Three receptions coming into today. He was a popular MIAA recruit, Kalamazoo, Olivet, Albion all wanted him. Lands in Indiana for trying. Under seven minutes now to go in the third. First down trying just inside the Elma 30 as they continue to rack up yardage but find themselves on the wrong side of a 19 point deficit. Price scoops up a low snap, keeps it himself on an option play, runs into the back of a couple of Elma defenders and Candela brings him down after a two yard gain, maybe three, <coughs> down to the 26. He had a little bit of room initially but then it didn't go anywhere. Got bottled up pretty good. Elma brings Tyler Walters on. Remember, Walters a converted running back who now plays sort of a hybrid linebacker DB position. Chandler Holloway out there as well. Elma really being forced to rotate the defensive personnel. Yeah. Jet King getting some reps on this drive. Second and seven for trying. Elma by 19, 49 to 30. Maybe almost jumped offside, did not make contact, was able to get back. Candela gives chase, rolling out as Price, a flag down behind, a late oh, throw that may not have gotten grounding. the line of scrimmage. I think it is not grounding because the line of scrimmage is not very far upfield, but there's going to be a hold behind there's the play. definitely anyway. a hold behind the play. They'll discuss the ground. The official doesn't have his hat on, which tells me he's got something in mind. That's the field judge way upfield. That would be more like if a receiver went out of bounds. Yeah. The reason that I think it, okay, let's just see here. Yeah, well, that's all it's yeah, gonna just be. Just to hold, and the reason that I think it's not, Jeff, clearly Price was out of the pocket. Right. And he got it back at least very close to the line of scrimmage. I think what it would have been, Toph, is if the trying receiver had touched it, he was not eligible because he was out of bounds. He had gone out of bounds oh, and okay. come back in. That that's would, what that, the call would have ended up yeah. being had he um, contacted the football. Sure, and that explain, that would explain yep. the field judge tossing the hat. As it is, it's just a hold. Second and 18, under six minutes now. Still costly for the Thunder. Yeah, for sure. Scott's shifting around. Jarrett moves up onto the line of scrimmage way on the left end of the Scott's defense. Price content to run, some clock, run the play clock down to wait to see what he wants. Now going to flush out, just dumps it forward, and Nichols makes the catch and runs headlong into a couple of Scott's defenders, gets back near the original line of scrimmage at the 29. Nice little push pass moving up into the pocket there from Price. I am amazed with Price's poise under duress, and that's something that Troy Abs talks about is the calmness well, of Alex Price. I mean, he's dropped back so many times in his career that you it, it's, a, it's something that you can learn. For sure. Experience matters. The Scots have picked him off three times today, though, and that's a big part of their 19-point lead. Third down and 10. Trine needs the 19-yard line. Play action thrown over the middle into traffic, looking for Clampett incomplete. Clampett wanted a flag, not going to get no, it No, they this tried time. to run a pick, and it didn't work. Gray stayed right with him. And no choice for Trine but to go this time. Previous fourth down attempt from the 15-yard line was intercepted by Drew Hum in the end zone. They've tried to go deep a few times in these situations. See what they look for here. Five minutes to play, third quarter. Elma with a 19-point lead. Trying feeling like they need points on this possession. Price again dries the hands, clearly having some trouble sweating out there in the heat. Low snap, barely scooped up. Price with time, high over the middle, behind Klein, and he dropped it. He should have caught it still. Marlett right there to apply the hit. And when Brandon Klein wasn't able to secure it immediately, knocked away, and you're pointing like there's a flag. There's on a the flag far side on the line. far side. It's an odd place for it, but before we turn this over, it's an illegal procedure penalty. Klein the, the heck climb. out of that. Yep. Scotts will take the football. And the Alma defense... Two second half possessions so far. They've been, but they did not break on either one. Trying now just two of six on fourth downs this year. Such a good third down team, but unable to convert that time. Two huge fourth down stops to start this second half for Elma. 
uh, who has very limited time of possession, but with the exception of one punt. Single coverage, no safety help on Frenchko here. Three on three, still better odds for trying than the three on two earlier. First down, Elma may look to run a little bit of clock here. They bring in Jordan Williams, and Williams was one flying tackle away from breaking that. He gets three up the middle to the 33. Dr. Hasselman was the one who Hasselman on that stop. Pleasant Lake, Indiana native. Jordan Williams again on second and six. Almost the exact same result. Same tackler and everything, and another three yards. Scots are going to need to get a first down here. They don't want to put that defense back out there already. Yeah, this would, this would be pretty quick to call for They're the punt They're going to slow down yeah. right now. And I know you, I know you vetoed that huddle. idea, but I think it's almost required just to keep the defense with a little bit of gas in the tank. They're going to burst out of the huddle like they normally do with Rife's package. Play action, flag down. They didn't get set. They throw it over the top, complete to Webb. It's a first down Coming if it back. counts, but don't bet on that. All the way to the 35. Webb says, let's go, let's go, let's go. And look at Carter St. John look over his head and see the flag and go, oh, man. All 11 weren't set. It's a tough call for the officials to make, but they got to watch when Elma bursts out of there. And Elma's got to allow that one second yep. of being set before the ball gets snapped. So from third and four back to third and nine. That's a big play right there. And they got Webb wide open, too. Yeah, that, they basically ran one of Rife's plays with St. John at quarterback. Kruger now to the left. Eddie Williams returns as the running back. St. John, quick fake, steps up, looking for French go too high, and the first incompletion of the day from Carter St. John is a misfire at the 356 mark of the third quarter. It's a big stop for the Thunder, though. Yep, quick, quick, get Elma off the field, get the offense back out there. We'll see if they come after Kempf here. Oh, I certainly would. Yeah. Kempf only one punt earlier, which distance-wise turned out fine, but that was courtesy of about 20 yards of roll, averaging just under, well, actually probably over 40 yards a kick on the season now with a long of 50. They're going to send two return men deep to try to avoid that roll. Remember that Kempf had a problem off a low snap against Anderson two weeks ago. It came back to him on one hop, got through his legs. This one is right between the eight and the zero and a tough spiraling kick that's gonna require a fair catch from Street, a wise decision at the 32, as Spears was right there if anything had gone differently. Good kick, Scott's defense back out there now. But again, that was a stop that Trine had to have. 3.50 to play in the third, 49-30. Elmo with the lone touchdown of this second half. Yeah, the two defenses have improved, certainly, in this second half. Alex Price on the day now, 37 attempts already, 303 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions. You mentioned it earlier, a very legitimate shot at a 400-yard day, oh, yeah. and if so, that would be his third in five games this year. Klein with 99 receiving yards, Lawson 95. Arthur held to 43 on just two grabs. Hand off to Kirby on first down, bounces off his tight end and then goes left out to the 39. It's a pickup of six, almost seven. Safardini and Hum in there on that tackle. Trying themselves will need to think about kicking the tempo up a little bit. Maybe not yet, but soon. Tight end to the left side of the line. Second down and three. First down marker at the 42, 49 to 30 Elma. Kirby into the middle, has the first down. Ball comes loose and the Scots are gonna fall on another one. There are five Scots all over it. It's Fredenberg that gets it. Five Scots for the fifth turnover. Kirby can't hold on. He squirted through, but suddenly the ball had a lot more momentum than he did. Scott's creating turnover after turnover here. When you get five bonus possessions, it does make the game easier. It does. Scott's a look to strike right here, I'm sure. 
Three interceptions, two fumble recoveries, a third fumble recovery negated by an inadvertent whistle. And Carter St. John, whose passing completions have fallen to a pedestrian 10 of 11. Comes back out, already working on a three touchdown day. Trio out to the left, Eddie Williams up the middle, and I think Elma's gonna try to do it on the ground, and I don't know whether they're gonna be able to. Try well, they're not averaging a whole lot on the ground so far, as far as yards per carry goes. It's only 3.4 yards a carry for the Scots. Yeah, 65 rushing yards, and it did not change on that play, no gain. 245 left in the third, Elma by 19. So a three score advantage, which is why they're willing to take some time. Back to Poff on an end around, now back to St. John lobbing it long and out there as Kruger caught at the 10. Maybe they're not gonna run for long as it's a razzle dazzle flea flicker touchdown. 45 yard touchdown pass. And St. John threw another gem. We saw it last year to Lotterman. This year it goes to Kruger with Lotterman out with an injury. And try and bid on it hard. Williams to Poff and back to St. John and a touchdown. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kruger trying to get his receiving gloves off so he can hold for the and Hernandez I'm PAT. I'm sure his hands are sweaty. They're probably difficult to get off now, too. Yeah, this, this might be a little bit of an ask for Gage. He won't mind, though. Kick down, big high. Hernandez knows to get it up in the air. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year for Gage Kruger. Makes it 56 to 30. We'll be back. Alma further deflates the trine balloon with a flea flicker touchdown. Short kickoff here into the middle of the field. And knocked down at the 30 yard line. Chandler Holloway just brought the lumber. Crawford on the return or possibly Vinnie Ambrose depending upon which one's on the kick return team. Last year, Jeff, one of the many records that Elma set was one for just points scored in a season with 472. Remember, they did that in 12 games through fewer than five games, as there's still a quarter and a little bit left to go today. 284 points already this season. Wow. Trine sends the starters back out, down by 26. It's been a long, hot day. I believe uh, Ish Abdulaziz came off with a, a left leg injury of some sort after that kickoff. Okay, oh yeah, he's, he's gonna hobbling. He's over under the tent. Yep, he's hobbling over there on the sidelines, and we'll see the training staff. Price to throw, quick little screen pass caught by Williams Drew, out flat. Um, Drew Hum undercuts the legs for a short gain of only a yard or two. Drew changed this entire football game with that interception in the end zone. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. If Trine scores on that possession, gets this down to a one-score ball game, then yes, things look considerably different. Gray, Sofferdini, and Kugelman, the three linebackers in a 3-3-5 alignment for Alma. Three receivers go to the right for Trine. Gray thinks about a blitz, now retreats out of it. Jermaine Williams with the carry right into the arms of Kugelman for a short gain to the 33 or 34. As the helicopter goes right over us, that is the medevac, unfortunately. It's not the one you like to no, see, but the one uh, you don't see. a beautiful gold blue helicopter flies overhead. Third down and six. 
trying from its own 34, trailing 56 to 30, trying not to fall to two and three to start this young 2023 What's season. What's Bryce doing here? Taking a long time. Now they're trying to figure out where exactly they want clamp it to line up. I guess it's a big play. Got to got to pick it up, so yep. better get it right. Yep. Third and six. Scott's going to bring three. Thrown down the sideline, trying to play a little jump ball on a back shoulder throw, and a terrific catch by Loss and a flag down, and that's likely to be interference on Drew Hong. Yeah, he never got turned around that time. Didn't matter as Lawson got up high, made the catch, which is worth it for trying because that was more than a 15-yard pickup. Yeah, he might be called for a hold, Will Hong. Could have been, could have been before the pass. Nope. Angles. Pass interference on home. Lawson is a talent, I will tell you that. I'm not surprised that his high school decided they needed to move him to quarterback as a senior, but his receiving ability, deadly. That's catch number eight on the day along with a touchdown. It means 26 catches on this season already. First down trying from the Elma 41. They continue to rack up yards, but it's almost 56 points that are ruling the day. Price with time, flushed out to his left on what he chases after him, delivers into traffic right along the sideline. Let's see, catch Boy. made but out of bounds by Lawson. He thought he dragged the toes and we couldn't see now, it. Robertson got held big time out around midfield, no call. Second and 10 on the incompletion. That was a 41st attempt on the day for Alex Price, currently at 330 passing yards and still racking him up. 37 seconds left in the third quarter. We're not done here yet. This is a two o'clock kickoff. We're two and a half hours in. It's been a long game in the sunshine to let the Scots fans celebrate homecoming. Price goes on two, looks right, looks left, high over the middle, dangerous throw and picked off. Turnover number six and it's Drew Hum again. Hum to the 30. And flag down behind. The Scots get way too aggressive on the blocking after the interception. Yes, they did. Unnecessary there between Beaudry and Soffordini, but Hum does it again. Six turnovers on the day. That one, that's the first really kind of bad pass from Price yeah. that sailed out of his hands Stepped high over the Stepped up into the, the pocket. The pocket collapsed on him as he went to throw. He kind of jumped up as he threw it right into the arms of Drew Hum, overthrew everybody except for Hum. Scots won't get very good starting position here as they're going to be called for a personal foul. Yeah. Unnecessary roughness penalty, I assume, is what it's going to be. Well, we'll call it a block in the back, but either or. Yeah. Scots will take the football in a 26-point lead. That they will. Still third quarter, 25 seconds to go here. Do you keep St. John on? Yes. Okay. Trying is too explosive offensively. You need another touchdown, maybe two. Well, they keep St. John, but they change up the receivers. We see Jansen McNiff well, for the first time. Well, this is that time. second unit. Yeah. Joey Kostrubiak's in there. Broderick Miller to the top side of the field. Kostrubiak, the bigger back, comes on. Five carries a week ago. He'll get it on first down, and he just <laughs> levels the defender, bounces off 15, 25, 30, and a first down out to the 34. I think he must have saw what Eddie Williams yes. did on that touchdown run and said, hey, that kind of looks like fun. Let me try. Next, Joey Running over people. Strubiak, 27 rushing yards, plus one reception coming in. Oh, he's going to do it again to the guy. Off to the left, more collisions and more yards for Kostrubiak in that trying territory to the 49. I don't know how many more times Joseph Johnson's going to try to tackle him. Johnson, the leading tackler on this trying team, but having to do it Gracious, something came flying down out of the sky and landed in the bleachers. He's having, it's a t-shirt. Oh, the t-shirt the, 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 the cannon is out because it's the end of the third quarter. Elmo will have it in trying territory with a 56 to 30 lead when we come back for the last 15.
Fourth quarter about to get underway. Eight Scots touchdowns so far en route to a 56-30 lead. Game was 42-30 at halftime, but Elma extends it by 14 in the, or in the third quarter. Kostrubiak to the left for three to the 48. Second down. Elma was running full tempo at the end of the quarter. They're going to keep it up about, I'd say about 80% speed right now. Fake to Kostrubiak now. St. John wanted to go down the sidelines. Now thinks about running, then passing. Now running again. Out to his right, hemmed in in the open field. I think that was a situation where Carter thought something was going to open up maybe with Miller late and then decided there is no yeah. reason to try to find a tight window in a 26-point no. game. No. Live to play, another down. Thomas still on there at tight end. Jansen and McNiff to the near side. Noah Jansen, six catches, 31 yards on the season. McNiff, three grabs. He'll go in motion up to the top side of the field. Hand off Kostrubiak on third and seven. He's going to try to find it. He tumbles. It'll depend on the landing. They're going to stay short. That's not a very good spot. No, it's not. I don't think he had the first down, but it's going to be fourth and two, and it probably should have been closer to fourth and one. And Elma's going to keep the offense out there. They're just trying to decide what to do. I see Rife on the sideline pointing at Chris Edwards to make the play call. Elman's going to take its time. Fourth and two, 13.30 to play in this one. Elman looking to stay on offense, keep this trying oh on the sidelines, and now they're going to take a little more time off the clock. Six on the play clock. They're not going to get this off. Maybe they're going to take a timeout, I, I think. I think that's exactly what now, they're going to do. St. John looks to offensive coordinator Zach Reepma and makes that request. That'll stop it with 13.14 to go. The referees called a delay a game. Everybody else thinks that it was oh. a. Well, maybe they're just going to punt. Yeah, like I say, maybe they took yeah, the delay just to punt. punt. Yeah, you're right. I saw them look over to the sidelines, and I saw Reepma on the field, so I assumed they had taken the timeout. But you're right. They're just going to back it up and then send Kempf out to punt it away. Now 6'5", 230, big guy back there punting out of Traverse City, St. Francis. Squats to scoop up a lowish snap, gets a great punt away to the right side, fair catch signaled and drives all the way back to the five or six yard line before Burris is able to haul that in. Right there. Thought he was gonna fair catch that at the 10 and yeah. it just kept going. There's a... An argument to be made to decline that delay a game penalty so that Kempf is not so comfortable just putting the full boot into it. I've seen more and more coaches doing that recently. Right. I think the risk in that situation is that you give Elma a little more time to think about going. Well, yeah, you, you can tick them off and turn them into going for it, yeah, too. And then that they decide, okay, fine, <laughs> watch this. Alumni awards being introduced here. Of course, those were announced a while back, but awarded today for homecoming, including Casey Zayner as the Young Alumni Award, who we still see around the local area all the time. Alex Price soldiers on at quarterback. His team down by 26, 13 minutes to go. And off into the middle. Oh, my Instead goodness. trying to take it outside. Just not much there. That was Drew Hum again laying Felder. a shoulder into him. Felder most of the time has started plays in the middle, and that's where he was successful in the first half. He's tried to run more to the sidelines on his couple of carries for the second half. Thunder looks like they're stuck in the mud now. Not moving quickly in and out of the huddle. Felder with nine carries today, Jeff, had only four on the season coming in. Second and nine, low snap. Price has trouble handling it, running for his life. Now throws to the sidelines. What He's going to complete that out there to Arthur. That is an amazing improvisation. Incredible. Sanderson was there to apply the pressure. That's a tough judgment call for Price of do you try to pick it up or do I just fall on this at the one yard right. line to avoid the potential of six going the wrong direction. But instead, he turns it into a big completion out to the 27. Cameron Benson. You are missing a credit card. You might want to come up to the press box. First down trying at the 27. 
Alma trying to put this one away and head into their bye week at 5-0. Screen pass thrown underneath behind the line of scrimmage and unable to get away is Brandon Klein. Tackle out there in the open field. Who got that for Alma? It was Beaudry. It was Brock Beaudry. Yep. Oh, that was a nice was. tackle from Beaudry. A lot of Scott's jerseys riding up a little bit. They are right For now. a little extra ventilation in the heat. Second and 10, roll out to the right from Price. Slings it to the sidelines. That one too high for Arthur and through the wickets. And then Elmo will use that incompletion as an opportunity to send new personnel in, knowing that it will take the officials a while just to get the ball back to the middle yep. of the field. Stops the clock with 11.24 to play. Third and 10 for Trine. First down marker out at the 37. Beaudry is the deep safety. He stands all the way back at the 42. I'm going to give a 10-yard cushion to all three receivers on the right. Price from the pocket looking for everything, trying to find Arthur Garland with him, and it's overthrown and incomplete. And Raphael Garland, the transfer from Adrian, step for step that time with Connor Arthur. Yeah, he was trying to get through to the inside position, never could, but the ball was well overthrown, and Trine's going to have to punt for the first time today. Yep, a little bit of a forced wave of the white flag. I suppose you could go for it here, but down by 26 with 11 minutes to go, and I would assume under a lot of fatigue, Dan Le Hernandez will come out. Only five punts this year has pinned three of them inside the 20-yard line. He'll need good contact to drive this one far enough back. Joe Debski to return, who's obviously had a quiet day. <laughs> yes, he has. Long snap count. And maybe too Too long. long of a snap count. Didn't yep. get it off. It was so, taken forever. Yep. Georgia native will back up five yards and try this again. Just allows Debski to move up five yards. Scott should get pretty good field position here. Debski's been excellent in the return game, averaging almost 10 yards a return, a long of 43. Uh, he may be in an auto fair catch uh, call here, up by 26. Find out. Nope. Returnable kick if he wants to from the 35. Right up the middle of the field, 40, 45, 50. Big collision, stays on his feet. Not going to get any further, but at least sending the message that it takes more than that Joe to bring me down. Matthews, either Kirby or Jimenez, probably Jimenez listed as the, well, they're both listed as running backs. Don't know that they'd have Kirby out there hitting someone on know, a punt but return. Debsky but brought some toughness on that one. Sure did. Scott's ball at midfield. And let's see who comes out of the huddle personnel-wise now. Still 11 minutes to play, but it is... A four-score game. A flag down at the 40-yard line. Oh yeah, there is over on the oh. Trine sideline. Okay. Could be far away from the actual return, but one of the gunners uh, holding there. Debski's return comes off the board. And the end of the the end of the third no no quarter. it's not the end of the third quarter. We had that a while ago. Yeah. But pl please no, <laughs> we're hot. Official now wants to collect, can correct that statement, and now the mic won't work. No. Nope. 11.04 to play in the fourth quarter. And Elma continues on with actually almost all of the starters now. Yep. Webb returns. <clears throat> that does not surprise Eddie me one Williams. bit. H. Kruger, Devin French go. They're going to get at least one more series. St. John to Williams. Out to his right. Tumbles his way. A lateral log roll across the 30-yard line. To the 31. Williams on the day. Picking up the numbers now a little bit with the second half carries. 10 carries, 31 yards, and the score plus the six on that one. Expect a lot of runs here. That's a pretty good wager. Scott's already 
Yeah. Now they will stand there for 18 seconds. I don't That's know gonna, if they can stand there that long. Say, you don't want to hold that stance that long. <laughs> Everybody on the offensive line looking back at Carter St. John said, hey, can we go? And here it is. St. John keeps it himself on an option, tries to get outside to the right, fumbles the football. This is loose. Who's going to get back on it? And a great job by Frenchko to roll a dope through it and scoop it up, but a substantial well, loss. We Denver. talked about that, Jeff. Elma yep. has coughed it up 10 times this year and lost only two. That ball was out there in the open field. Frenchko was simply the fastest player on the field and right. got there. So St. John calling it for himself on the read option, almost instigating a disaster. I think that's a situation of just sitting there for so long, waiting. Third down and 12. We'll see if Elma wants to open it up here. They will throw. St. John going to try to hit the home run to Frenchko. He camps underneath it at the 40, and he's racing away. Down inside the 15 to the 10. It's a Devin Frenchko touchdown. One more exclamation point. It's 60-plus on homecoming. 76 yards for Frenchko, and a huge day for him now. Poor Devin Frenchko, a 76-yard catch, and it's not even his longest of the year. Four catches for... A lot. 186 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, well, we talked about Poff always scoring. Apparently, yeah. Frenchko wants in on that, too. And St. John will end up with a huge day as well. And Trine just couldn't defend the deep ball. That was really their big downfall. That's the fifth passing touchdown for St. John, which is a new personal best after many times with four. And 63 to 30 now, Elma, and a shutout in the second half. 21 to nothing, second half edge. Still 9.44 to play, though. Stay with us. Nine forty-four to go. Looks like Josh Hernandez's day may be done, at least in the kickoff department. Ed Markarian will get to boot this one. Scott's put up 63, third time in five games that they've scored 60 or more. Markarian hangs it up high, fielded from the 15-yard line. And dropped it about the 25 for Isaiah Hunter. He's been the other kick returner back there with Street most of the day. I think now we're going to see a lot of new Scots on the on the football yeah, field. Yeah, I think at this point at 33, you can feel pretty comfortable rolling out some new faces. Trine gave them everything they had. I mean, Trine's offensive numbers are still going to be impressive. Not the 385 that they put up in the first half, but Trine still has 82 plays for 532 yards of offense. That ain't a bad day. No, but the, the Scots have yeah. really been good defensively in the second half. Well, and the problem is six turnovers. Yep. Price will stay out there. Elma now 22 turnovers forced through five games. All the starters for Trine are out there. Cole Alexander is the backup quarterback for Trine. Price rolls on for now, at least. Hands off, Jer hands off to Jeremiah Williams, who... Boy. Safardini's still there. Yep, and Williams, that's the first time that it's looked like tired legs. Yep. He got hit, he spun backwards, and it's like the punch wasn't there to keep his balance like it has been. Gain of a yard out to the 26. <clears throat> Two to the right, one to the left. Most of the starters still out there for Elma defensively as well. Price scoops up a low snap, rolling to his right. Scott's want to hold, not going to get it. Complete underneath to Williams, and Elma takes a swipe at the football. They knock it loose. That's gonna another be inadvertent down. whistle. He's cost the Scots twice now. 
But this oh, time he's just going to give him the football. This time, this time they'll say the whistle <laughs> came after the ball was loose, and Elma makes it seven turnovers. Kugelman recovers. They're going to talk about it a little bit first, yeah, though. Well, yeah, let's see. Yeah, they're they're going to say Scott's football, which is the right call, but the whistle again blew before the play was over. Underhill took a swipe as he made that tackle and knocked the ball loose. Give credit to the Elma pass rushes. They fought through what they thought were some holds. Jack Anderson doing that. I think I called Jack Campbell earlier, but it's Anderson. Seven turnovers created by that Scott's D, and here comes Devereaux. Trent Devereaux returns to quarterback position, one that he likely would have held but for the arrival of Carter St. John, who has just been phenomenal. Devereaux started back two years ago. Excellent quarterback in his own right. Hands off on first down to Kostrubiak, who sidesteps a tackler this time rather than trying to run through. Joseph Johnson wraps him up, but only after a seven-yard gain. Devereaux on the year, 12 of 21, 93 yards, two touchdowns and an interception, 29 yards on the ground and a TD. Chesting High School product, but out of Oakley, Michigan, a town with a population of 286. There are a few more people than that here today. There's more football players than that here today. Possibly, right about the same. Second down and four, Kostrubiak out to the right. Tumbles his way through more traffic and down to the 21, a first down. Uh, he is running tough right here. I mean, he wants carries. He does. And this is where you show that you're, you know, you're worth it. And he's going to get them. Fight hard for it. He's a different style of back than either Eddie or Jordan Williams. Trine has its own Jordan Williams, also a Michigan product, a defensive back. And off Kostrubiak on first down again. Just a little sidestep maneuver working well against the tired trying legs. And look at this scrum. Where will the pile move? It goes forward to the 11. The Scots just have more left. The Scots coaches love it. They were hollering up here down the way from us atop the press box. This is a, this is a just who's tougher yep. in this moment. Now, admittedly, it's a little easier to be tough with a 33-point lead, but... 7.25, clock rolling, a nine-yard gain. Dominic Overway in at tight end on the left side. Jansen wide to the left. Likely that you're going to see much throwing here. Kostrubiak bent backwards. Oh, painfully gets the legs pulled under him. Let's see. Devereaux quickly over there to help Kostrubiak up. And indeed, he's a little ginger on that right bring leg. bring Khalil Brown in. Brown out of Birch Run as Kostrubiak hobbles off, having been ugh, painfully bent backwards in that tackle. Not what you want to see there. Just a tough spot. Everybody kind of converged on him and got hit up high with his legs unable to move forward and compensate. Third down and three, toss to Brown on the left. He's a weapon himself, tumbles towards the 10, should have it, will wait on oh, the spot. No. Maybe, yep. Eh, give me credit every yeah. once every you once in a while one. I'm right. Not, you got that one. More often than not I'm wrong, but, but I got You got, got a one. better spot than I thought he was going to. Now they're gonna give him all the way to the 10, yeah. which that's clearly a first down. So a big pickup for Brown to keep the sticks moving for Elmo, allow them to run a little bit of clock in this fourth quarter down to the six minute mark. Brown has not found the end zone yet this year. 22 carries coming into today. He'll get it here again. Surges through the first level, but tackled on the second. Give him the five. Cuts the distance in half. Brown, not the biggest guy. 5'8", 170. Considerably different than the 210 pounds that Kostrubiak offers. Devereaux brings the Scots to the line for second and goal. Formation packed in, trying, of course, expecting a run. It'll be a push to the sideline to try to get Brown the corner, and he will not. Well defensed. Johnson comes through. That's how he's got the tackle yep. lead. One of a number of trying players from Michigan, Angola, just across the border into Indiana, so they recruit well in MIAA territory. Third and goal back at the eight now after the yardage loss. Oh, 
Overway going to line up in front of Jansen out to the left. Two receivers to the right as well. It will be Brown. What can he find? To the left, to the right, to the end zone. Khalil Brown, his first career touchdown as an Elma Scott, and it's 69 points on homecoming. Eight-yard touchdown run for Khalil Brown. First of, I believe, to be probably quite a few for as a Scott. Elma almost got to 70 points on homecoming last year against Martin Luther. Yeah, well, Trine's a heck of a lot tougher opponent than Martin Luther. A little bit different. 69 to nothing last year, and now an extra point. Hernandez with a chance to make it 70. Good snap, good hold, kick up, kick good. 70 points on the left side of the scoreboard for the Elma Scots with 447 to play. It's 70 to 30, a total of 100. We'll be back. Jeff, at halftime, we asked some questions, said, you know, the Scots were in a position they hadn't been in before, and we needed to see how they would respond to the adversity of... They responded not, not, big. Not letting this game time. get away, but not shutting the door in the second quarter. And they came out ready to go they in the second half. They pitched a shutout here in the second half so far. 28 nothing in the second half. Mark Carrion kicks it away. The middle of the field street will camp underneath it. Drops it at the 14. This ball is loose again. Who's going to get there? And Elma's got another one. Oh, my. Technically, that does not count as the eighth turnover of the game. It's no different than an onside kick, but it might as well be. Scott's got coaches a Scott hurt down there, were, too. We're walking away and now stopping to watch. Make sure. We're looking to get everybody out of the way. This may not be a... Good situation. Nonetheless, Street could not handle the kickoff. 4.42 to play. And this is one of the reasons that football personnel at all levels, whether it's the NFL, college, whatever, continue to look at kickoffs as yep. plays that may need to be modified a little bit because they are such high-speed collisions. They are. Everybody's up to full speed. When everybody starts at the line of scrimmage, they just push and shove each other. There aren't a lot of things that you can do, though, you know? Well, you know, one of, one of the things that they've, that they've talked about is situations where you don't get a running start. It basically, every, you know, only the kicker gets to back right. off the line of scrimmage. That slows it down a little bit. There's some other proposals. Obviously, there are, there are the radical ones of just eliminating the kickoff from the game and creating an alternative for an onside kick where you essentially yeah, can opt a for too a radical. fourth down and 15 situation, something that is statistically equivalent. But not what you want to see. We are not sure who the Scott is who is down in the take pile time just out. up to be a, a minute. seated position. So we'll take a quick pause and come back after this. Ethan Patrick, the injured Scott, up on his feet and walking off the field. Unsure exactly what happened there. He's smiling. He just took yeah. a big hit. He'll be all right. But Elma gets the ball back after the fumble already leading 70 to 30. Now handed off into the middle. I think that is that Morgan? Uh, yeah, 22. Brian Morgan. Yeah. 
5'9", sophomore. We'll see a number of different ball carriers now. Morgan out of Houghton Lake. You're going to need a lot of time on the coach. So, of course, you got two weeks if you need it to try That's to recap true. this whole game. With the Scots having a bye coming up this week. Are you having a pizza eating You know, contest? I don't know yet. Sometimes, we probably will. Sometimes that's what's happened. But I was just thinking, you know, on my, my auxiliary notes that I have, I, I have a one-sentence summary of each game. I'm not sure how I'm going to no, get this game, tough one. this one down to one sentence. <laughs> Morgan again on second down, cuts to the left, tripped up at the 15, but falls forward near the 11. Morgan again for the carry, picks up three or four. Brought down there, Cortland Mallory in on that tackle. Mallory, one of Carter St. John's high school teammates. At least I think so. He's listed out of Fort Wayne here. Perhaps I got that wrong. Third down and two. Oh, oh no, he is from Bishop Chittard. School won a couple of state championships, one with Carter St. John at the helm. And another amazing day for Elmas quarterback today, tossing five more touchdowns. Trent Devereaux in, hands off to Morgan, crosses the 10, gets stood up there. Mark him at the nine. It's gonna be close to first down yardage. Very close. It's like he is just short at the first estimation from the officiating crew. They may have to measure. They're gonna announce they move the sticks, I think. This is normal, yeah, yeah. The referee says, let's go. The line judge saying, move the sticks. Yep, yep. This is a no first Now they're going to finally move them. So first and goal for the Scots. 2.54 to go. St. John on the day. Only threw it 13 times. Yeah, yeah. 12 completions, 385 yards, five touchdowns. It's going to be hard to keep him off the D3 team of the week for a second week in a row. True. And French Co. will surely be there. You'd certainly think so. Four catches, 186, and three scores. Question is, which one of them is going to be MIAA Player of the Week? Hand off to Morgan going left this time, down to about the six. Morgan picks up three or four. Elma, of course, more than content to take its time. Oh, yeah. Take a look at some of the new faces in there on the offensive line. Max Munzer is in there. Joseph Foster comprising the left side. Zwart getting ready to snap it back. Cole Streeter over on the right. And a couple others as well that we're trying to pick up. Second down and goal. Hand off Morgan. Left hit in the backfield, loses yardage that time. Unable to get around Jalen Page, the returning starter out of Anderson, Indiana. Clock down to a minute and a half. Third down here. Elma can't run the clock out. So they can't. Which makes it kind of awkward. Yeah, I mean, they could they could kneel twice and then just say, here, yeah. Trine, you're going to have you 30 seconds. You don't really want to score, but you also yeah. don't really want to give Trine the ball for free either. And you do want to give people like Brian Morgan the opportunity to carry it on homecoming. Right. Scotts might actually take a delay here. Play clock down to nine, does not, well, looks like Elma may try to get it off right at the end of the play clock. Four seconds left as they run it down, and they do snap it. Morgan again steps to his right, met at the five, and that's going to be all. All she wrote for that one, 48 seconds. Flag flies late. Okay. Would have been about a six-second differential play clock to game clock, but now we'll have to sort the flag on probably on some extracurriculars out. Two more plays left in this one. One we uh, expect they're going to wait. When he the raised flag his off. hand, I think the yeah. flag just came out of his uh, ah. pocket there, because it didn't look like a real aggressive throw or anything. I think he just nicked it with his hand when he went up to stop the clock. It has the effect of adding about 15 seconds to the game because the play clock then goes to 25 instead of 40. So Elma will now have to snap this with about 21 seconds to go. Downs marker's wrong. Yeah, it's actually fourth down. Correct. It is fourth and goal. <laughs> we can forgive the chain gang for being perhaps a little unfocused. Linesman figures it out. Now a whistle. Do we have a 
Timeout, delay, what happened? Oh, Elma does take a delay. So they'll back up five. I don't know if there's anybody else that they're looking to get in the game. They still have to run fourth down. I see people like Jansen taking their helmets off and high-fiving the coaching well, they're staff. Just gonna shake oh, they're just going to They're just going to They're just going to line it, it up. You're right. I'm just going to say that's enough. Yep. Interesting. Okay, well, final score is the final score. 70 to 30. Elma ends up with a 40-point victory on halftime, on homecoming. A huge second half, a 28-0 margin. Elma led by 25 in the first half. Trine got back within 12. Everything was going their way. And Drew Hum changed this game with yep. an end zone interception on fourth down on the first drive of the second half. And after that, it was all Elma the rest of the way. We'll take a quick pause, come back with a post-game show right after this. This is how we do. A huge effort on homecoming as Elma scores 70 against a very good trying team that posted over 500 yards of total offense. Total offense at the 442 mark of the fourth quarter was 540 for trying, 534 for Elma. It would appear that the hamsters running the live stats gave up at that point and decided to beat the traffic uh, as our computer is not updating beyond there. Uh, but we can still tell you a number of the key individual stats as Elma charged on to victory here. Carter St. John, 12 of 13. That's a 92% completion percentage. He came in already completing 72% of his throws. 385 yards, five touchdowns. He was sacked only once. Devin Frenchko, four grabs, 186 yards and three touchdowns. Gage Kruger, 87 yards and a touchdown reception. Also two crucial two-point conversions early in this game. Kruger caught the flea flicker. Nate Webb, two for 49, including an early catch when he was left completely uncovered as the Scots scored a mere minute and 16 seconds into this game. Zach Poff, two catches, 33 yards. Eddie Williams, a 23-yard touchdown grab. And then Cole Thomas, one catch for seven yards. On the ground, Kostrubiak actually ends up leading the way for Elma with 59, or 58 yards, pardon me. Eddie Williams, 10 carries, 36 and a touchdown. St. John, 19 yards and a touchdown. And then Khalil Brown, 14 yards and a score at the end of the day. Defensively, a great Great game from Eli Jackson. 12 tackles, and I think all, maybe all but one of them in the first half. Um, when, when things were kind of going the other direction, Eli was the one who was holding the fort down. Odin Softer. Odin Soferdini, seven tackles, seven for Beaudry, seven for Fredenberg. And basically, if you know somebody on Elma's team, they either intercepted a pass or could recover yeah, a fumble. Exactly. Because pretty much everybody exactly. did at some point along the way. Elma forces uh, seven or eight turnovers, depending upon how exactly you want to count that final kickoff rec uh, recovery. Technically, that does not count as a turnover. Uh, but <laughs> Elma's defense will celebrate <laughs> oh, it the yeah. same way. An excellent uh, day for the Scots. Yeah, what, what a day. A chance now to go in and get a, get a little bit of a break before yep. they have to play Hope. Uh, give give Gage Kruger a chance to hopefully heal up. We don't really know what the Gage status Nelson. is. Gage yeah. Nelson. Sorry, 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 yes, Gage Nelson. A Kruger, chance to I heal think, up. came out of the game well. He, uh, yeah. he had a big game. Yeah, no, no question about that. But Nelson, who missed the second half after getting banged up in the second quarter, but he, was certainly an active participant. Yes, he was. Despite and not you being You think on the about field. it, Toph, the Scots.